Okay. Good evening. Welcome to Grand Blank Township Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, October 5th. If we could everyone rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk Robertson, would you call the roll? Certainly. Trustee Hugo. Here. Uh, Trustee Fike. Here. Trustee Raritan. Here. Trustee White. Here. Treasurer Kilmer. Here. Myself, of course, I'm here. Supervisor Bennett. Yes, present. Thanks. Seven members present, a quorum. Okay, at this time, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the regular agenda. I'll make a motion. Okay, motion by Hugo, support by Fike. Okay. Uh, support by Fike. All right. Raritan? Yes. Hugo? Yes. White? Yes. Fike? Yes. Myself? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Seven nothing. Motion passes. Okay. At this time, we will entertain uh, public comment. And uh, go ahead, Ms. Lane. We just ask that everyone uh, give their name, address, and uh, keep it to three minutes. I'll try, Supervisor okay. Bennett. My name is Kathy Lane, 5366 Kimberly Drive, Grand Blank. I was elected and had the honor of serving the township residents and businesses for 30 years. And so I wanted to correct and make some points about past history that you might not know. Number one, the eight boards that I served on did know what they were being paid when they were elected and during their uh, terms of office. Occasionally we raised our pay. However, most of the time up until 2020, we were very happy to continue the philosophy of our 188 years history of public service and give back to our communities. We were meeting regularly for four meetings a month plus all the extra meetings starting back in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s. And they've been cut back substantially since then. I also want you to know that we have had a great city council for years. We've had great community school leaders. The school board is being paid $25 a meeting. The city council is being paid $1,050 a year. Again, the philosophy in Grand Blanc Township, and you can bring in all sorts of graphs and information from other communities, but our community was committed to give back and public service. The other thing I want you to know is we grew from 2000 to 2010 from 29,000 people to 37,900, and now in the last census, our estimate is like 39,000 people. So we were dealing with a lot of growth during my times on the board, and I know that you have things to do. So I'm just trying to make sure that you understand from a past historian what is going on. One of the things you need to know also is when we it was decided to go from a full-time supervisor to a part-time supervisor and a full-time superintendent as a leadership role in this community. The board failed because we, Mr. Laddie and I did the research. The board intended for the supervisor's position to be part-time with no benefits. However, when Mr. Laddie and I reviewed the records, the motion did not include that it was to be no benefits. So therefore, when Mr. Bennett came on and he was given the part-time salary that Mickey Hoffman had had for 12 years, he also then received the benefit of full health care benefits because the, the resolution had not included definitively all the perks, just the salaries that were mentioned. So I wanted to sort of clarify the record, make sure your resolution was complete so that if you as trustees or any other board members are not only getting a stipend, or benefits that it's all included. The previous boards got $40, the trustees got $40 a month for the use of their phone and their computer. So if you're getting that, 
for transparency and honesty. Please do it. But again, you're going to do what you want to do, but you are now today changing the philosophy from service and give back to the community to money, in my personal opinion. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else who would like to make public comment? Yes. Okay, Mr. Yancho. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Mike Yancho Sr. I live at uh, 10640 Halsey Road. Um, I'm very proud to live in this community. I think it's a wonderful community. And uh, a lot of that is because of the services that we receive in our community. We have the best police force, bar none, great fire department, great schools, and that all requires great leadership. I'm a firm believer that you get what you pay for. If you want to go cheap, you get cheap. That doesn't change the fact that all the people that serve on various committees and boards in this township do have the service of the community at heart. But I know that from the time that I've served on a few minor committees and spoken to trustees and uh, supervisors and superintendents um, at 7 or 8 or 9 o'clock at night or on the weekend, and they're always available, they spend an inordinate amount of time doing what I would call homework. They've got a lot of things to study. Uh, the, the world is more complicated than it's ever been. Um, we have great technology, but the technology doesn't seem to make anything easier. It makes it more difficult and more challenging. I think that, uh, you know, when we look at some of the other communities around us, for instance, uh, we've, I just recently looked at Davison because it's a, one of the closest communities of any significant size, one of the townships, um, where we have 39,000 people, they have 19,000 people. Where our budget for the year is about 43 million, I believe, their budget for the year is under 20, 20 million. So we, you know, what we hire when we vote for our leadership is for them to take on the responsibility of uh, monitoring those funds and distributing them in a way that is the most benefit to our community. So I approve of the, res of the three resolutions uh, that uh, are going to be discussed tonight. I think that uh, I've heard some rumors that some of the elected officials may decide uh, to not accept that uh, their full pay that might be voted on and approved. But I would suggest that those people accept that pay and then donate it to the favorite charity in our community. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else make, wish to make public comment? Good evening, Peter 7212 Porter Road. I'll try to keep this brief. I do believe that each one of these seats do be deserve an increase, okay? Not because of who's sitting it, in it, just because of those seats you're in. But I've been attending all of these meetings over the past, uh, actually it's been going on seven months, discussing these wages, not wages, compensation. I think one trustee mentioned we got to put an end to this, got to get over with it. I, I agree with that. It, seven months is too long dwelling on this. Thing is, though, I had my sheet back there of your spreadsheet, and I left it back there, of compensation elsewhere. That started with the last board. It's merely an um, inquiry of other communities of what they do. It's not really a study of what you've done on how you operate and all this good stuff. That's, that's all I've seen in the last board started this thing. So, you know, that being said, I just want to say, and you take the 90 percentile, okay? 
of employees, how we like to hire people. That's great for hiring, but this is for elected. This is for, for serving in a, a public office, a, an office holder you are, okay? An elected official. It has nothing to do with percentiles. You are not employees, okay? I want to thank the two board members that had input into this compensation. We've been asking for input from the public. I've been at these meetings, and I think I'm the only one that's been talking. So I want to, th I want to thank the two board members, the, the clerk and the treasurer, for coming up with a, an answer. You do, you do deserve an increase, though, okay? Under the trustees, there was one, one, that early on made a statement of a dollar amount that he felt was fair. I want to thank that trustee for that. And that was in the $7,000 range. I don't know if that's right, I don't know if that's wrong or not, but at least I got input from the board. The board's been asking for input from the residents, but you're not all inputting stuff. And I'll just move on. There's a whole bunch I was going to say, but I will flip through it. So, it, okay, we'll say that. Uh, I just looked up uh, the President of the United States, got his last raise 20 years ago, 2001, okay? And it's said in there that the salary of a president shall never be increased during his term or her term. And I think we followed that policy. I think we should follow that policy. I think that's the right thing to do. Follow suit. Trickle down. Don't try to trickle up. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to make public comment? Okay. Seeing no further public comment, we'll close public comment and bring it back to the board. And we have a privileged presentation at this time. The board will hear a presentation from Amtira discussing our current service. Good evening, Mr. Garman. I don't know if Good afternoon. all of you Good know evening. anybody on the board. Or... I'll say uh, some new faces. I'm going to pass out a sheet. Okay. Thank you. The last time I was here was January of 2020. Thank you. Review the last three months. I had spoke. They said there was some issues that had come up, and I want to make sure we address them. First of all, the biggest thing, obviously, we know of the pandemic since 2020. Um, something you guys should all know is uh, waste news is like, uh, I would say, the official word of the waste industry. Like they do all the a lot of research and everything. Yep. yep. I'm going to ask that we not have conversation back. It's very distracting to the board. So since the pandemic. Um, when 2020 closed, they did a study to show that in the waste industry, curbside, trash, recycling, and compost, the effects on it on a national scheme, which will kind of fit into us locally pretty close. Uh, waste volumes with everyone living at home were up to 127% from the previous year. Compost volumes were up 124% and recycling was up 131%. So what you had was everyone that was working and going away for work now living at home and putting their stuff out at the curb. So waste companies were not making money at businesses anymore because everyone was generating the waste, the recycling at their home. And the people who was, were working and didn't have time to compost or work on their yards were now at home and having time. So, and in many cases, waste companies, even in our own state, increased rates because of that. So they had more volume, they had to hire more people, more trucks on the road to, con to be able to pick these up. Um, and we were really lucky in mid-Michigan that really, in mid-Michigan, none of the waste haulers did that. Now, they did south of us and they did north of us, but here in mid-Michigan, all the waste haulers kept their pricing for their residents. So that's a really good thing. Um, I want to make sure that I say how much I enjoy the partnership. I've actually been working with Grand Blanc Township since 2004. So with two other companies, I've always been the rep for this community. And... I've been able to work, I think, with four different clerks now with Dave um, adding since, since my last meeting. And uh, it's, it's been really been enjoyable. It's, uh, 
it, it's uh, different in this township because in all my other in most of my other communities it's not a elected official that takes the phone calls so it's someone that's answering the phone that takes the phone calls and texts it into me or calls but it's not someone who's an elected official which makes it odd just so you guys know because I'll give an example. So Dave's job, obviously, is to make, and all other clerks, is to make your residents happy. The people that answer the phone at MTERA, their job are to follow their rules and regulations to do what's best for their company. So you have MTERA's cu customer service, you have your clerk, and then I sit right in the middle. So I'm kind of always between the rock and the hard place, so it's always an education process with the clerk I'm working with and the people to know, like, when they, if your residents call them Tara, they get one answer. You're telling them one answer, and then I've got to kind of weed between it to to uh, to figure out what what's really going on. Because as we go through this, you're going to see that there's a lot of stops every week. You guys are, you know, to be honest, in the since June, uh, the first week in June in Grand Blanc Township, there's been 591,162 stops serviced by Tara. 591,162,000 ,000 opportunities for service in that amount of time. There's been 99 contacts through Grand Blanc Township, and there was 59 through Amterra. So that customer service is very, very minuscule, the amount of complaints compared to the amount of opportunities there are for a situation. But when you're talking about people's garbage or their compost or their recycling, things they're passionate about, it's... It's not a, they don't poo-poo it. No one wants their garbage extra. No one wants to see someone mix compost with trash. No one wants to see their recycling not handled properly. So it, it's a passion product. So it, it tends to have more things going on than what you would have with, I don't know, not having your mail delivered for a day. You just get it the next day. So when you look at this, I want you to know that. Uh, some events with Amterra, um, in 2020, we actually constructed the largest recycling center in the state of Michigan. It's in Lansing. All your recycling since um, July of 2020, maybe it might have been June, starting in June, um, now goes to a recycling pad in at our office in Flint, gets dropped on a pad, then reloaded into a walking floor and then taken to Lansing, where it's the, the most state-of-the-art recycling center in the area, um, so that's why at that time we started being a lot more picky about like plastic bags and styrofoam and things on your curb that aren't recyclable, food products in your recycling because it ruins it for everybody else when other people do it wrong. So sometimes we have people that have missed recycling and really it's not missed, it's just they have so much more things in their bin or their container that isn't recycling that it's not worth it for us to pick up. Um, and our guys do have to get better about tagging it for those reasons instead of them leaving it. But again, you're dealing with, you know, thousands, over 10,000 stops a week and just in recycling. Um, so the pandemic hits in March. We have issues. Everyone's living at home. You have increased waste volumes, compost, recycling volumes. And I actually thought we were clear. Um, I work with two other waste haulers in different parts of the state, and they've had issues with employment. They had issues with COVID. And I think it was weeks before, I don't know if whether it was Scott or Dennis I was speaking to, and I'm like, yeah, I can't believe we've made it this long, no issues. And then it was Dennis, and, and then we had an issue. And when, the, when it hit, it hit, and it wiped us out. It wiped us out with only a few people having COVID, but a lot of people were in contact with them. And then it was an issue where we couldn't keep employees because people were scared of COVID. And just since the breakup that we had and we've been back to full, which we were, done, we were down for about five weeks, um, we have 25 new employees. 25 new employees on a staff that's about 85 employees total is a lot. So it's a lot of training. It's a lot of rehiring. Not an excuse, but that's the industry. When you go into um, a day in the waste industry and you have any open routes, it's a bad thing. It means you don't have enough to cover. The weeks we were recycling, we really didn't have enough to do your compost or your recycling, but we did get the compost because we made it a, a very good decision, I think, because compost and garbage stink and rot. So we went with not picking up your recycling because people could hold on to it. We could provide dumpsters for that. We could provide trucks in your parking lot for that. We thought we could solve it. We actually also only thought it was going to last two or three weeks at the most, and it ended up being over five. Grand Blank Township was lucky. 
your um, constituents that, um, I don't want to say constituents here, your board members were constantly contacting me, asking me what, we, what they could do, what we could do to help, because the <laughs> phones were ringing off the hook. So when we had extra time and we got some routes done early, we would send our whole fleet to Grand Blank. The other communities were not getting that, but the other communities were not asking for that. So on multiple occasions, Grand Blanc Township had, a, had situations where we were done at three o'clock with picking up trash and compost. We sent our whole fleet to Grand Blanc to pick up whatever recycling we saw. And then we also provided, you know, uh, recycling uh, trucks on your day of service for people to bring it to us. So, and also the other thing that uh, MTR did is without being requested of a credit, every penny that they didn't spend on employees and gas that they would have spent, they allocated back to their communities in this, you know, in every municipality in this community to give back any money that they would have saved by not having those employees and trucks on the road. So they, there was no profitability, there was nothing. Everything was given back to the communities. Um, you guys were provided a formula and a letter that it showed the breakdown to show how it was, and it was divvied out by um, how many weeks you were missed and how many households you have to make sure that was given back so that there wasn't a benefit from being down with COVID. So, but there was one, uh, uh, and lately there has been a, a couple issues here in Grand Blank that I want to address, and they're um, for you to understand it, they're in bold. So if it says C in bold, those were the calls that I got from Mr. Robertson or community saying, hey, there was mixing of compost. Um, and that was someone, one of our guys taking compost and mixing it in a garbage truck. Now, in our community, in our business, it's not a fireable offense. It should not be done, but it's not fireable. It is for recycling. Our business was built on recycling, so that's not acceptable at all to us. Now, I can tell you some of the reasons the guys do mix compost. They're not good ones, but I know you guys would understand them because the same crews that do your trash do your compost. They may do one first and do the other one second. So if they go through in the mornings and they pick up compost, and they're throwing it and they're done and they go dump out and then they go hit that route again and someone has taken their stuff out late and this time there's compost. Their choice is leave the compost and know that they're going to call and be mad that the compost was left or just throw it in the truck and try to deal with the consequences. Or they missed an area. They're, I mean, I just told you they're doing thousands of a couple thousand stops a day. They might miss an area or a back down or something or miss just not notice that the can said compost and they throw it in. Is that a good excuse? No. They should probably just leave it, but they don't. Or we're training new employees every day. That guy might think it's a shortcut to, to pick up this street of compost, but the only way I can fix that is if you guys tell me about it. So I rely on Mr. Robertson to give me, hey, these guys are throwing cans. All right, I, I can then find out the street. I can use my uh, the computer to find exactly what truck and what crew's there and, and figure out how to fix that. But if I don't get it, if I don't hear about it, I can't fix it. So there's also situations you'll see in this, if someone throws, they think sometimes people will think that Lots of boxes they put to the curb unbroken down is recycling. And when they see it thrown in a garbage truck, they're mad. Well, if they read their form that's provided for them annually, if you put a bunch of unbroken down boxes at the curb, that is trash. They're supposed to be broken down and tied together and cut to no bigger than three, three by three. And if they're bigger than that, they have to go in the trash and they think that's mixing. If they put out brush that's too big, we take, instead of leaving it, we'll take it as trash because it's not good to sit on the side of the road. So there's many reasons, but we can go through a few of these, but you can see it's every week. You can see every call that came in and what, well, not every call, but you can see every complaint that came in and what it was um, to. Now these on this, you can, and everyone that has a little star next to it, I've put next to it what the actual issue was. And if, uh, for example, June 14th, the late set, I actually talked to the resident. They said they didn't have it out on time. They had pallets at the curb. We don't take pallets. You had piles of moving boxes at the curb for recycling. It went in the trash. They complained that it should have never been put in the trash. Every one of those bold ones is the mixing ones that we spoke about that we've addressed every time I get them in, but I, ha I have to know about them to address because it's not the same crews every time. Um, you've got people who put out a house load of carpet. You have people putting recycling in plastic bags, which is unacceptable. 
you have people, since the pandemic, you guys have all seen on the news is, you're not supposed to have loose trash. You're just not. I mean, it's, it's not, you're not supposed to have loose trash. You were actually never supposed to have loose trash. We just took it anyway. And people will provide loose trash all the time. They will have a 96 gallon cart, which everything's supposed to be bagged in those anyway. And then they'll have cans and bottles and food waste and things in the bottom and think that we're supposed to crawl in there and get them. We're not. That's, that's not part of the service. Um, recycling, styrofoam's not recycling, but people will buy something that comes with a lot of styrofoam, they'll pour it in their recycling bin, then they wonder why it's not picked up. It's from the styrofoam. Uh, Mr. Robertson, the week of, I think it was September 8th, you called me and you're like, Dan, I don't understand why they didn't pick this up. The, this guy just had tons and tons of boxes inside other boxes. They were all giant furniture boxes full of other, other boxes and well, the recycling guys couldn't take them. And the guy, I called on the crew right away and I knew what his answer was going to be. He's, he's like, I didn't want to throw them in the trash because it was all cardboard and I didn't want anyone to get, I didn't want to get in trouble for throwing cardboard in the trash truck. So if it's put with your recycling, they're going to have to leave it because they don't want to get in trouble for leaving it. And then uh, the last one was last week. Th these are stories that you, you guys really need to hear because we need to work on the education process of not just your residents, but all the residents in the county, not just for Ontario, but for all the waste haulers, whether it's Flint, Grand Blank, Owasso, whatever. It's this community. Um, but the loose waste and not doing things right. Two of the calls I took last week, the people were nice and understanding and helped me through it, but one had a can with two garbage bags in it. And then on top of it, probably about 70 cigarettes and ashes all over it on the top. I don't want my employees to reach through someone's ashtray to get the garbage bags to do their job. Those guys do not like to wear gloves all the time. They should, but they don't. But no one should have to reach through someone's ashtray to get to garbage. And the second one, the lady was really nice. I spoke to her. She ended up bagging the stuff herself, but she had 10 or 12 bags of dog poop in like uh, Walmart bags on top of her garbage. So our guys had to reach through dog poop to get the garbage. While you say it's still in a, hand, a, a Walmart bag, no one wants to do that. That's not what we do. He shouldn't have taken it anyway. But I actually told her if she came in and rebagged everything with some of her other garbage bags, I would take it. And I did, and then I re-educated her to that. But in January in 2020, I don't see people doing the, I never saw the people do the careless things with their garbage that they do now. So when I said a lot of things have changed since I was here the last time, our world has changed a lot. It's not just the garbage industry. I'm not, you know, well, people are like, well, you used to take everything. Yeah, we did, but it, it wasn't the same type of things you're doing now. The messes that I show Mr. Robertson on, on, on my camera from people that put out piles of stuff down the street, not contained, huge mess, and then just say they want it picked up. They know they weren't they weren't doing that before. But again, it's not just Grand Blank Township, it's everybody. Now that people are living at home, everyone seems to have a different opinion. I love working with Grand Blank Township. I love working in Genesee County. It's the community I grew up in. Um, but again I want to mention in since the first week in June, five hundred and ninety one thousand one hundred and sixty two stops. We had 99 calls to Grand Blank Township, 59 to our office. Now let's not forget 41, <coughs> we're running late. We've been short staffed, we're doing <coughs> trainings. Sometimes the guys have trainings in the morning and then work in the afternoon. So we're running late, so we're just not there yet. And we're gonna have to see if we have any questions from everybody. No problem. I, the presentation you made, uh, I think uh, explains a lot of what we've been seeing and hearing. I know I've gotten calls from people you know, that I've called you on and yep. turns out the you know it's just loose trash in the can it's not bagged <coughs> yeah. or anything else and um, you know it's nice to see the st statistics but I think you're right in that educating the public in terms of recycling and even on their garbage what uh, what's acceptable and what isn't uh, I even have questions on some of the recycling stuff you know washing things out and I mean I think everybody's heard the pizza box thing a million times right but, there's a lot of other issues with recycling that people aren't sure of. And so I think we could do go a long ways with educating the public on those things. So Dennis, anything that you have uh, on the subject? No, I, I think if, see if there's any questions from uh, Clerk Robertson, he handles a lot of, or, you know, the vast majority of calls come into him. And so 
Um, I really appreciate uh, the educational component because I think we can do a better job as a community. Most people want to get it right. We have a really good recycling community here, and they don't want to. They're not trying to spoil their recycling, um, but we just we have to come up with better ways to to get education out there as well. And I think we can improve our aspect of it, which will also lessen the amount of calls that you're dealing with. I agree. Any questions for Mr. Garman? Mr. Kilmer? Uh, I just want to say that they, I, I think a uh, community like Fenton, which has a, a bag and tank system. Um, Speak up to the microphone. I'm glad that we don't have that. Uh, and I, I think that uh, <clears throat> that you guys do a, a darn good job. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Reardon. Yeah. Your complaint ratio is exceptional. Thank you. I mean, it really is. And uh, I, I have to agree on the balance. I think you guys do a fantastic job. And I've talked with some of your drivers because I've been out when they were collecting and very nice, very friendly people. So. Thank you. Yeah, I uh, was waiting till the end to speak. First of all, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I do want to say to the public generally and to the board that I have found Dan to be very attentive to any question or concern or, or uh, that I raise, whether by email, whether by text, whether it be you know uh, by phone call. I've gotten phone calls from Dan after hours in the evenings on the weekends, whatever whatever it required to keep me informed of, with the, with. Uh, on any issue that I sent him to, and, and, he, and I know he talks to the, to the constituents directly. Uh, uh, so I, I, he's been very, you've been very personally attentive to every complaint that I brought, um, and I want to thank you for that. Uh, in, in overwhelming measure, uh, I think they do a, do a fine job. Uh, and I just want, the best thing I can say is that any complaint that comes in to me will is immediately tr transmitted to to Dan, and then hopefully acted on during that business day, and hopefully no later than the next business day when the circumstances warrant. If it's late in the day, uh, and so uh, and honestly, I, I've I've kept a log of everything, and I've got every phone call that I've received since November 20th of last year uh, at my desk in a folder. So uh, <coughs> we've we've. We've gotten a lot of phone calls, we, but but when you when you consider the sheer number of stops that are made, uh, and I'm uh, I think it is, as you say the ratio is very is very minimal. Um, I, I I do think that that uh, uh, to I, and I understand the reasons for why you why you have to have some wiggle room on this, but to the fullest extent that you're able to arrive at the same place at the same time in a routine fashion, because human beings are creatures of habit. I've mentioned that to you, you know, in our conversation. I'm not saying anything now that I haven't said before, but I understand when you're training new employees or you have particularly high volumes, it might take a bit longer. I know that I'm telling everybody to put their garbage out the night before, certainly before 7 a.m. on on a, on a, on, a, on a garbage day. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, we want to make certain that everything is out on the curb. Uh, explaining the rules to folks as far as large items, one large item per week that two men can carry. What you can't put in, uh, you know, and what you can, uh, going through all the things on the blue sheet that that we have that outlines the. I never knew there were so darn many rules with regard to garbage and compost and and recycling until I got this job. So, but but I I I, I want to underscore again in overwhelming measure, in overwhelming measure, I've been very pleased with Mr. Garman's responsiveness to 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 this community and to the complaints. I, I just want to say we, we also need to manage some expectations. Um, you know, I, I handle a lot of the social media inquiries that we get, and, you know, I get people concerned that we haven't picked up. It's noon, and we haven't picked up anything. And uh, to me, it's like I don't care what time they're coming to pick it up, uh, you know, whether it's 7 a.m. or 6 p.m., you know. Um, but uh, some people, I, I guess, think that there's a schedule to it, and it's like uh, they could have had, you know, a large volume of, of trash in a certain neighborhood or who knows what that has them delayed. And um, so I think we need to manage expectations a little bit. I think um, also, you know, the volume that some people put out. I know, you know, during the COVID thing where uh, there were, I forget what happened, where uh, there was just like, 
huge volumes on everybody's curb. And it was just like, how are these guys going to get through all this and in one day? Um, but I think your, your, your staff does an exceptional job of picking up stuff that I, lo I drive by piles and I think that isn't going to get picked up. And it's gone when I come back through and it's whether it's carpet or whatever and furniture and you name it. And it's just like, man, these guys, uh, do a good job, but we appreciate you coming in, and uh, we'll continue the conversation. We've got a lengthy agenda tonight, unless somebody has something else for Dan or Mr. Garman. But uh, we appreciate uh, no the work you do. You and guys can look at that. The, the, I was asked to bring volumes to make sure because you had the complaints about, you know, are they taking all the trash with? On the bottom is your volumes for all okay. the months, so you can see where trash was, where compost was, and where recycling was, and that's in tons. Okay, so those are in tons. That's tons. Okay. So that's how the number of tons taken. So you can okay. see, while there may have been some mixing, and I, I told Mr. Robertson then every time I got the call, it could be happening. It shouldn't be. I, I can prove on GPS that it shouldn't because we're sending three trucks everywhere. But you can see there's still okay. a lot, and it, it, it wasn't a standard practice. You can clarify on the nature of the trucks that you have, whether they have one compartment or two. Would you speak to that issue? We do have some dual loaders. We don't have all dual loaders, but we do have some that are split down the middle that you can pick up compost and recycling or recycling and trash or trash and compost at the same time. We have actually at any, at any given point, whether they're shared with Port Huron or not, I believe we have 11 or 12. But we, Let's work on the uh, so education those are, piece. are in place, those are working in the... They do have Grand some Blank going House. to Grand Blank so Township every Wednesday. some of what people are seeing. And it could be, but it, it, again, it could just be new employees that were training or them picking it up when they shouldn't because it wasn't out when they went through the first time. Okay. <clears throat> there, there, and there's many reasons. And again, that's not a complaint just of Grand Blank. That's across the board. And that wasn't just now. That's always been there. Or garbage that's in the recycling or who knows what. So thank, thank you very well, much. And uh, I really the appreciate the relationship. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. We'll continue that conversation so we educate our public on these <laughs> issues. With that, we are going to move to approval of the agenda, the consent agenda. And I'll entertain a motion. I'll make that motion, okay. Mr. Supervisor. Supported by Mr. Fike. Supported by Fike. Uh, Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Myself, yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Okay, old business. Um, anything, Mr. Limita? The, uh, normally, this is the portion of the agenda where we review one or two items from the strategic uh, plan. Um, because of the length of the agenda uh, this evening uh, and with the budget presentation, we thought the budget presentation would be, uh, would be the time spent for that. Okay. Understandably. With that, uh, new business, the board will hear a presentation on the fiscal year 2022 budget. And... Let me bring that up. <clears throat> Which time do I got? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving us this opportunity, first and foremost. I know this is like the first formal walkthrough. You guys had a little bit of this when you came together last year, but it was much abbreviated because by the time you were seated as a board, it was kind of like, here's the budget, we need to pass it and move on. Um, this time we wanna make sure that we had more than enough time for you guys to really consider uh, what we were presenting for our fiscal year 2022 budget. And uh, you've got them on September 1st, you've had this, you know, at least 30 days uh, to review it. Now we're gonna kind of flip through some of the key points and highlights. All of the departments are represented, so you'll hear a brief presentation from myself, then from overall from the departments. And what we'd ask is if you hold your questions, write them down, and then we can do a Q&A at the end just so we can blow through the presentation. We will try to be through it in about 30 minutes. Um, and if all goes well, uh, that's what will happen so we don't keep you here um, all night. Is this the <clears throat> Um, so a couple things that I think are key, especially for new board members, is to remember that requirements for the budgeting process, if you have been involved in budgeting in the private sector, and this is your first foray into the public sector, they're more unalike than they are like. In the private sector, you might work with budgets, but they're not a requirement. You don't have to pass one. As a governmental entity, you are required to pass a budget. 
before you spend any money. In fact, you don't have authorization to spend. If you don't approve your fiscal year 2022 budget by December 31st, come January 1st, we have no authority to spend any money until you approve that. That appropriation has to occur before we move. That's one of the biggest differences. It's also binding. We adopt by cost center, so we adopt it by these different departments, by the cost centers, but you know, while we still do that, we still have line items in there that show you how we intend to spend the money. And then if we're going to deviate from the amounts that we're spending in those cost centers, we need to prepare a budget amendment that comes to the board that you have to pass before we get authorization to spend. Um, the other big thing is that our budgets are revenue based. We can't increase the price of widgets and to keep pace. The only thing we can do is we get, we do the best guesstimate that we can. It's an educated guess on where our revenue is going to be based upon where we, our taxable value was set and the March board of review. We take that and then uh, looking at revenue sharing, all of our other sources of revenue, and we make an educated guess about what we have total in revenue. And then we take that revenue and we use it to maximize service delivery. This isn't a profit center. We're not like trying to find ways to hack it out of there. If we have extra money, it goes to OPEB, which is one of the strategic plan initiatives that the board has selected. One of the biggest things that we had for this year that we've never had, and this is the seventh budget I've worked on for Grand Blanc Township, is we had direction from the board in the form of a strategic plan. So on behalf of all of us, thank you for doing that because that gives us the direction. It tells us what's the important thing to the board and what initiatives you expect us to move forward. That didn't really work for me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, there we go. Yes. Um, so uh, it's a statutory uh, authority of the state constitution that gives you the ability to spend money. But there's only three things that you are required to do. Collect taxes, assess properties, elections administration. Those are the only three mandated functions of a township. All of the things on the right side, fire protection, police services, parks and rec, libraries, they're all discretionary. Now, your residents might argue that they're not discretionary because those are important to them and it's one of the things that government does is delivers those services, but we don't have to do them. We're not mandated to do them. Um, and that is another big difference in the budget and, and why uh, the Charter Township Act through the state constitution gives us the authority to do these, but we always have to point to any time we're going to expend money, we have to be able to show constitutionally that we have authority to spend that money. Our goals for 2022, always maintain or increase current levels of service to meet Grand Blanc Township needs and expectations. We have to fund the board's adopted strategic plan initiatives. We continue to look and expand develop, economic development opportunities like through the DDA and working with them, and we have to budget for capital projects so that we can keep buying police cars and fire trucks and uh, all the equipment that we need to deliver those same services. Your outlook for 2022, I've got great news for you. Eighth year of taxable value growth. Our SEV, $1.8 billion, up over 5% from the prior year. Taxable value up 4.6. But challenges remain. All of this growth put us at the taxable value we were at at 2007 levels. Because we're a millage driven, revenue driven, determines the amount of services that we can deliver, that's a big number because it was 14 years it took us from the recession to get back to those taxable value levels, but our revenue still hasn't 100% because of the Headley rollbacks, and I sent some information out to you guys earlier today, and Proposal A limits the amount that we can grow. Because of that, there's some other things, personal property tax losses, veterans exemptions that came along. Our state revenue sharing is over $12 million down now um, if it would have been fully funded. And so that had a big impact. When you look at our unfunded liabilities, if we had that $12 million had continued in full payment from the state revenue sharing dollars, our unfunded liabilities would be a heck of a lot less than they are now. And of course, the impacts of COVID-19 that we all had to experience. Um, this is really a very busy slide that I'm not going to read to you. What it's really saying is there are state and legal requirements for the budget that we have to follow. Uniform Budget and Accounting Act. We're required, government tells us the chart of accounts that we're going to follow, how we're going to do it, when we're going to hold the meetings, the, the, they prescribe the notices. Everything that we do is delivered um, because the government is mandated on how we're going to go through this. 
the most important thing that comes out of this is you got to pass the Appropriations Act, you got to pass the budget before December 31st if, we can if we're going to function in fiscal year 2022. With that, I'm going to turn this over to your finance director, Kathy Sostak, and she's going to walk you through how our budgeting process works. Right here. And we're going to hold, I don't know if you mentioned, Mr. Limited, we're going to hold any questions till the end. So I'd ask board members, if you have questions, to just uh, jot them down, and at the end we'll do a Q&A just so we can move through this. Okay, okay. thanks. Good evening. I'll begin, begin with how the budget process, uh, how we go about it at the township here. Uh, first of all, uh, we start in the month of July. We'll, my department will send out budget worksheets to all the various departments. Uh, the following month, the uh, department heads will submit their requests for both their operating budget along with their capital requests. Uh, finance then prepares all of the revenue projections and any other um, uh, expenditures that are not specific to any one department. And then we also compile all of the uh, requests from the various department heads uh, for their capital and operating. Um, once that is complete, we'll do budget review meetings. <coughs> Uh, myself, the superintendent, and uh, the various department heads. And at this point in time here, based upon the revenue projections that we have, whether or not we need to make any adjustments to the various requests so that we are able to provide a balanced budget by September 1st of each year to the board here. And then um, we go through this process here of budget reviews, and then by December 31st, the uh, budget must be prepared or um, approved by the board. Uh, the description of the various fund types here. Uh, budgeting tonight will cover all of the governmental funds, which are the funds that are required to have a budget. Um, the, within um, within uh, governmental accounting, we have various fund types so that we can separate and distinguish which revenues are um, associated with which expenditures. Uh, the various governmental fund types are, first of all, uh, the largest fund is a general fund. It's the primary operating fund, and it accounts for um, all of the resources of the government that aren't accounted for any any specific one fund. Uh, special revenue funds, we have seven special revenue funds. These are used to um, distinguish specific revenue sources that we're limited as to what we can use those, uh, which types of expenditures can be used on, on those revenue sources. We have one debt service fund uh, that takes care of the uh, debt payment for the uh, police building the bond that we have for the police building. And then we have one capital project fund, which uh, is used to uh, uh, purchase all of the, the acquisition of all the capital assets that are associated with uh, general fund um, departments. Uh, the second fund type is a proprietary fund, and that uh, includes enterprise funds, of which the township has one. That's the Department of Public Works, which is the operations for water and sewer. Uh, that'll be covered on a different night, though. This slide here depicts the uh, summary of the revenues and expenditures for the general fund. It shows the uh, 2019 and 2020 actual activity. Uh, the 2021 amended budget, which is the one that we're currently operating in right now, and then the 2022 proposed budget of $17.9 million for the general fund. <coughs> uh, the revenues are split into three various revenues, uh, general, and then we split out the, the police and fire revenues. And then the expenditures are by the various cost centers, which will be coming <clears throat> later tonight in this presentation. This slide here is a pie chart of uh, the various revenue sources of the general fund. Uh, you can see by far property taxes, which is about $10 million, is by far the largest revenue source. Uh, second by um, state revenue sources of about $3.8 million. And then the various other parts of the pie here. Um, the various revenue sources that we have within the general fund. This is the same uh, pie chart, but for the expenditures. And this right here also breaks out the uh, uh, various uh, cost centers, um, which you can see by far public safety takes up uh, um, well over half of that pie chart with police and fire. And then public services is uh, another larger part of the pie as well as uh, the transfers out and the post-employment benefits and the various other pieces of <coughs> cost centers. Uh, the special revenue fund budgets. Um, I will leave the Parks and Rec and Building Department. Uh, those will be covered in further detail later in this presentation, so I'll just uh, briefly go over the remainder. 
Uh, the solid waste fund that accounts for the special assessment for solid waste along with the uh, expenditures. The um, PEG fund or public education government fund, that is the cable franchise fees and we're limited as to how we can spend those funds so that's separated out into a separate fund. Uh, the federal law equitable sharing fund and the drug forfeiture fund are both uh, related to the police department and those have limitations on their expenditures as well. Uh, CDBG accounts for the grant revenues that we receive from that program and the various expenditures. The Municipal Campus Project Fund is the payment for the police department building bond that we currently have out there. And capital projects are all of those expenditures related to general fund um, cost centers <coughs> that, uh, where we purchase the capital. So we have, as you can see, slightly over $6 million in the special revenue funds. <coughs> Next, we'll start the various cost centers uh, within the general fund and we'll begin with finance department. Uh, the finance department consists of three employees. That's myself. I have one a senior staff accountant and one staff accountant. And some of our responsibilities include uh, financial reporting, uh, the preparation of this budget. Uh, we prepare a, for the annual audit, uh, state financial reporting, and we record all the financial transactions of the township. Do bank account reconciliations, uh, maintenance of the capital asset records, and we process accounts payable. Uh, the goal of finance is, of course, to accurately present, you know, in accordance with GAAP, the results of Grand Blank Township's financial operations and conditions in a timely manner. And this budget here provides all the necessary funding, both with personnel and operational costs, so that we are able to accomplish that mandate. Uh, one thing in the finance department, um, Based upon, we do have a little bit of an increase in training and some uh, audit assistance on uh, that's for 2022 in comparison to 2021 and that is because of, I had two employees, both of my employees um, are new employees. Uh, they they uh, were recently hired here back in the spring to replace two uh, positions that were vacated. And then we are also required now to do a single audit because of all the additional federal funds that we're receiving in re regards to the ARPA funds, so um, that's a new mandate, so we'll have to be, we do have some additional funding in there for that. Uh, this appropriation and transfers cost center, it's the very last cost center in the budget. Uh, what that accounts for is the OPEB contribution that we make on an annual basis. We currently have uh, $962,000 budgeted. Uh, it also accounts for the transfers out, and this is, the transfers out are to the other um, funds within the um, other special revenue funds that uh, in the case where their revenue generated is not enough to support their expenditures so the general fund provides additional support and that's uh, for parks and recreation of about 385,000 our campus project fund of 730,000 and capital projects for about $59,000 so at this point I'll turn it back over to superintendent Lehman to present the superintendent's budget thank you Ms. Ostek Thanks, Kathy. Um, I can be brief here. I think you guys know what I do for a living, so I'll skip a lot of that. Day-to-day um, -day operations, uh, making sure that we have the, the smooth running uh, township departments and the liaison between the board and all the township employees. Um, my staff really consists of myself, executive coordinator, uh, Melissa Roberts, uh, who you all know and have worked with, the human resource manager, Colleen Nedzwicky, and we have uh, a new part-time uh, human resource assistant. Uh, obviously, um, I'm charged with statutorily as a township superintendent, again, through the Charter Township Act. I got a whole list, A through O's, of the things that I'm required to uh, do for the township. But a big part of that is making sure that I represent the township's best interests on various, uh, whether it's the federal, state, county agencies, look for economic development opportunities, um, you know, oversee uh, those kind of things. I act as like economic development director uh, and then serve as your budget administrator throughout the year. The goal is always to maximize service delivery to taxpayers and increase our customer service levels. It's one of the things that staff and I talk about every two weeks about how to, what can we do to be better for customer service, and it's one of our biggest focuses. Um, I want uh, Colleen to come up and introduce herself just to make sure you guys are familiar with our right here, um, human resource manager. Good evening. My Good evening. name is Colleen and Zwicky. Um, the Human Resource Resources Department is responsible for providing services to over 150 employees 
um, part of the services are payroll administration, recruitment, onboarding, budget administration, tax reporting, employee and labor relations, along with assistance to our retirees. The goal is for us to maintain compliance, limit our liabilities as an employer, while provide, continuing to provide an ex excellent employment package to attract and retain our valued Grambling Township employees. The department is continuing to develop these procedures and policies and to streamline our services. For 2022, we have requested in the budget for township-wide training, along with the applicant tracking system and a third-party FMLA administration. And now you will be speaking with Dennis, who will be uh, taking over for Dulcie Ranta. So Thanks, Dulcie Colin. was not able to be here this evening, but you did have the big presentation from the assessing department earlier this year where they kind of walked you through the whole thing. Um, and Danielle, the deputy assessor, couldn't be here. One of the big things I want to leave you with assessing really the whole thing tonight is that how, why is assessing important to us? Because not only if you recall, one of the three things that we're mandated to do is assess properties. Um, but if they don't get it right, we suffer. They, they have to be accurate. They have to get out there and do their work. 20% of the properties in the township have to be boots on the ground, uh, reassessed and looked at every single year. We have to have 100% every five years. So 20% of properties, every single property, 20% is boots on the ground, walked by, looked at, made sure that there's been no changes uh, every year. Um, that's critically important because we base our budget on revenue. Like I said, we're a revenue-driven budget, and if they don't get it right, if they don't have the taxable value right, and we end up with a lot of Michigan Tax Tribunal challenges, then if the revenue projections were wrong, then our budget is wrong. Um, and, and we're going to be making some serious adjustments in the middle of the year that is not where we want to be. So our assessing department is incredibly important. I'm very proud of our assessing department. They work really hard. We just had a new uh, employee, well, she's been here for a long time, uh, Annalisa Scheibel, who has transitioned over to the assessing department. We're excited to see her um, in, you know, increase her career, but to help us with assessing. We ran all of 2021 with a vacant position, so it's nice to have them back up at full steam. Nathan, if you guys recall, you just approved us to hire Nathan um, not that long ago, he was a contract employee for six months, and now he is our full-time employee right here. Hello. Good evening. My name is, good evening. My name is Nathan Luzabelt. I'm the Information Systems Director here. So our department consists of two employees right now. It's myself and Robbie Beller. So we handle all of the uh, stuff that goes within that. So the, I, uh, the Information Systems Department role here at the township at a high level is to ensure that all the township staff and elected officials have the tools and knowledge they need to serve the public securely and efficiently while making sure that the critical data that they need is readily available. <clears throat> there you go. Some of those things that we do are maintaining, upgrading or replacing some of our aging IT infrastructure maintaining an accurate list of the township's IT assets, facilitating the secure backup and storage of the critical township data, technical support for all of the township staff and elected officials, and educating our staff on the latest cybersecurity threats. The proposed budget increase for 2022 will allow the Information Systems Department to move forward with the board strategic plan for IT upgrades. Some of the things that are happening that are Part of the increase in costs are the Office 360 migra Office 365 migration and the licensing that is going to be coming from that yearly. Uh, we have plans for additional IT managed services in the next year to help us uh, close up some security holes in the township. We have plans for cloud storage, which is going to allow us to do off-site backup. And since we are moving to uh, are moving away from on-premise email servers, our existing fax servers are no longer going to be compatible uh, with Office 365. They're uh, actually very old. They still work um, as of right now, um, but I think that they're well past their date anyways, and they could uh, stop at any moment. Regardless of that, though, we do need to find a different solution because there are still people in the township that rely on faxing. So 
we're going to be uh, looking into an alternative solution for that. And EFAX is something that I'm looking into as a uh, pretty cost effective solution instead of replacing the entire server <laughs> for that. We're going to be introducing some email security awareness training so that uh, the township employees are provided the kind of education they need to keep up with the latest threats that are going on and, and how to um, s how to see those threats come in and, and recognize them. Server and software licensing and as well as asset management software licensing. We are requesting also the creation of an information systems internal service fund. So this is kind of just a reallocation or moving some funds over to this area. And the reason that we're doing this um, is this fund is designed to help the information systems department pay for ongoing operational costs. So I'll go into you know what that means in general. But it, it uh, is funded using an allocation method that's going to assist the township in appropriately allocating cost to department, which is by employee count and the departmental usage on the specific uh, like servers or things that I'm uh, having to purchase things for. So that uh, currently is around, uh, I think we have it set to 50% for uh, by employee count and 50% by departmental usage of the specific resource. Some of the things that we'll use this for as an example are server and computer warranty renewals. Usually a server is roughly, uh, its, its lifespan is around seven to eight years. And when you buy a server, you get uh, warranty and technical support with that server for about three years. So in order for us to continue receiving that, you would renew it at least once um, to continue on getting the service for that. In case something dies on it, you, we can get uh, service or parts um, for that to repair it, usually overnight and things like that, so that we actually can get things running. Um, and you know, critical servers that need to be running can continue to do so. Licensing, IT infrastructure consumables, and when I say that, I kind of just mean uh, hard drives fail. So when hard drives fail, we need to buy new ones, and they're not that cheap. Um, and, and other things like that, like the the memory and the servers and, and other things like this. Uh, and then the last thing is right now is just specialty services and support calls when we have to call in for something specific. Okay. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. I'll hand it off to our Chief of Police, Ron Wiles. Thank you. Well, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity. I, uh, I'm incredibly proud of our, our department and what we've accomplished. And like uh, Mr. Yanchil said, unscripted, there's no one better than the men and women of the Grambling Township Police Department. Um, as you know, we are a community uh, service-oriented department. Um, our fundamental duties, um, there you go, include uh, serving the community first and foremost, safeguarding lives and property, keeping the peace, and ensuring the rights of all to liberty, equality, and justice. Um, we, we accomplish these goals in a, in a number of ways. Um, the first and foremost, building and maintaining strong community partnerships, <coughs> upholding the highest ethical standards of our staff, providing a safe environment for our residents and our officers, developing and enhancing the knowledge, skills, and abilities of our staff, or otherwise known as training, and enhancing the quality of life through innovative and progressive law enforcement practices and partnerships with our business and community leaders. Um, if you look through the proposed budget, the biggest change you will see for the police department is the addition of a cadet program, requesting funding for that program. Um, the purpose behind that, it is a paid position to bring one or two college students who have an interest in law enforcement and almost make it like a pipeline to the police department for a recruiting tool. As you know, and I've said before, before this board, recruiting right now in law enforcement is incredibly difficult. Um, the, the candidate pool is very shallow, and finding good quality candidates to meet our standards, our expectations is even harder. So we feel that if we can start this cadet program, it'll give us the opportunity to get a first-hand look at people interested in law enforcement, hopefully uh, mentor them through our department, and bring them on as full-time officers in the future when they're prepared to do so. Um, the proposed budget will certainly allow the police department to meet our goals, continuing to provide the superior level of service that our residents expect and deserve, while keeping our officers safe and maintaining the outstanding level of support that we currently receive uh, from our residents. So, thank you. Thank you, Chief. With that, I will introduce uh, Fire Chief Bob Burdett. Oh, please. <laughs> 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 
back before. Oh, thank you, Chief Wiles. Appreciate that. So, uh, let's see here. Which one is it? The red one? Right here. Right there. There we go. That's it. Okay. So, earlier this year, you were uh, it was privileged to come up in front of you and present our year end report, which basically covered everything that we, uh, the fire department, does. And that is that we provide fire suppression, safety inspections, fire investigation, fire safety site plan review, public education, smoke and carbon monoxide alarm installation, and we service the community wherever we possibly can. Obviously, in 2020, one of the biggest challenges that everyone faced was the COVID situation that occurred. In March of 2020, the fire department decided we needed to split our operations and open our number two station with staffing at 16 hours a day from 8 in the morning till midnight. So we have two firefighters there during the day and also two here during the day. And at night after midnight, three come down here to this station. To achieve that goal, obviously, for separation. So we have social distancing goals that we really wanted to meet. But in doing that, what we found is that we decreased the response times for the residents of the southern area of the community by, in, by decreasing it by a minute, which is significant for a fire department. We had a lot of big trucks. They're very slow, but we, get, we got there a minute faster. That coupled along with the projected growth in the southern end of the community, we're asking for renovations to be made to station number two to staff the station 24 hours a day, which would include, you know, kitchen, sleeping areas, so on. But we're looking at having the funding for that, for the renovations to be identified in the first quarter of 2022. On your topic for the strategic plan of the board uh, was to replace our current station number one located here at the Township Government Center. We're looking at the design phase to be completed here in the third quarter of 2022. In addition, obviously, the fire department always needs some additional items. We have to replace equipment that's old and obsolete, so we're asking for $37,000 to replace that obsolete old equipment that we need uh, uh, through NFPA standards to, have to take care of. One of the things that everybody talks about is the fire department's applying for grants. So this last portion here is just an idea of what we did this last year. We applied for $69,240 in grants. We've received 7,800 so far to date. We still have 50,000 that are still pending. So the other $11,000 was either denied or at that, at that time didn't feel it was necessary for us. Oh, thank you. Very good. With that, I'm gonna turn this over to you. Oh, who's my next guy? It's Jeremy Jones. <laughs> thank you, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Department provides exceptional customer service for its citizens, business owners, developers, and the internal departments requiring assistance for the planning and zoning. We also provide ongoing support to the Township Board, the Planning Commission, and to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Our goals always include providing continuous, improved, and streamlined customer service in an efficient, respectful, and professional manner and to ensure all development projects are expedited through thoroughly reviewed and inspected for quality, safety, and long-term maintenance. We also address immediate long-term interests of the development community that directly improves the quality of life for the township, residents, businesses, and the visitors. Implement current and long-term range master plan goals and objectives by always being mindful of the big picture. And we also try to keep zoning ordinances up to date to protect the integrity of the township, but also keeping the residents' uh, needs in mind. The 2022 budget provides master plan and future land use goal implementations. Uh, also provides for zoning ordinance text amendment revisions based on the strategic plan objectives. And lastly, training for the planning staff, but also for the planning commission and the zoning board of appeals. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. And then we've got Mr. Sears. Me? <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm going to talk to you about the next three departments. Um, first up is the Building and Grounds Department. Um, it is just what it sounds like. This covers funds to maintain this building along with the campus around it. Um, it includes cleaning, mowing, uh, building supplies, um, also small projects that enhance the aesthetics or operations of the, the building. 
um, for instance, ceiling tile replacements, lighting enhancements, so on and so forth. The goal of this budget is always to continue what we do, making improvements, continue the operations of the building, but maintain the same funding level from year on uh, out. Uh, this year in our 2020 budget request include $15,000 additional, um, and that's targeted for ceiling tile replacements and some other minor repairs that we have to make to the building. The Public Services Department is uh, basically all the infrastructure that's out in the community. So what comes out of this fund are going to be your special assessment districts, the money that we have to put up front to pay for road pavings. Um, the majority of the time that's paid back to us through bonds immediately, but sometimes for smaller districts, it, it, the payback is a little bit longer. Uh, snow removal, mosquito spraying, cemetery maintenance, and then contributions to the library. Um, for 2022, much like building and grounds budget, our goal is going to be to continue the same funding level and still provide the same level of service, if not better than we, than we can to the community. Um, and we've made no additional funding requests for next year. Uh, I'm going to also talk to you about the building department and code enforcement tonight. We've also we've talked about this quite a bit in the past few weeks. The building department, the key responsibility is to permit, uh, track, and inspect all of the construction projects throughout the township. Um, we do building and site plan reviews, inspection of all construction projects, uh, enforcement of the township's general ordinances and zoning ordinances. We also do stop work orders. Uh, condemnation proceedings and unhabitable structure enforcement. So any of those projects out there that are not permitted that we need to take action on, um, homes that are unsafe, um, unoccupied, critters living in them or have you not, um, those are all things that our code enforcement officers are going to address also. Our goals uh, are to streamline operations uh, to make sure that we are as efficient and effective as possible for our community. Uh, we're going to try and utilize more self-service options so that the public can either use our website or um, digital forms or anything like that to increase the capacity of our clerical staff um, and reduce the burden on our office a little bit. And then we're going to try and transition to electronic plan submittal, which we've been trying to do for several years now. It's It's been a little bit more difficult than we thought it was going to be, but we think that we can definitely make it happen in the next year. For next year's budget, we requested uh, some additional staffing for customer service um, and then uh, some help with permits also. And then some funds for scanning some archived plans we have. In the building department, we keep a set of plans for every single structure in the entire township. And we have them all in hard copy right now, cataloged in binders and Excel spreadsheets. If we have those plans scanned, it'll make uh, researching so much easier. Um, so we want to get that done along with re-indexing some scanned files that we already have to make them more easily accessible. Um, code enforcement, uh, we've, again, we've talked about code enforcement a lot. So far, changes to date that we've made uh, are added hours uh, to our code enforcement through reduced clerical responsibility for our full-time inspector. So uh, you've all heard of Amy that's in our office. She's our full-time employee. And she's been playing double duty for a while, being a code enforcement officer and helping out some of the other departments. And we're trying to reduce the reliability on her to get her out in the field more. Also, we've, uh, we've already hired one other part-time code enforcement officer, and we're advertising and hiring for a second one now. Um, next year's budget. We have a third part-time code enforcement officer that uh, we'd like to install to help towards the board's strategic plan of improving our operations out in the community and hopefully enhancing um, the aesthetics and just educating people on what code violations really are and how they can avoid them in the future. And with that, last but not least, is Parks Director Patrick Linehan. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Director Sears. All right, so the Parks and Recreation Department is responsible for park and trail maintenance, senior center operations, and providing recreational opportunities and facilities to the Grand Blank community. Uh, the department also oversees the Historic District Commission. So uh, what is our baseline for our budget? Uh, as you remember, the Parks Department is new to the township. Uh, previously, it was an independent commission. So we're still trying to figure out what our baseline is. 
Um, obviously, COVID-19 did not help that. In fact, my first day on the job is when we had to close the building. So we're still trying to identify what our baseline is. We're hopeful next year that we will be back to um, more of a normal year uh, where we can run our programs and our events and our facilities uh, at what we believe is a normal level. Uh, COVID-19 has affected uh, supply chains um, that's affected our programs, what we can offer, what we can't offer, trying to get supplies and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's also affected the attendance of uh, some of the programs. Um, we're having trouble recruiting um, key staff, uh, lifeguards, swim instructors. Um, when you look at our department versus the park commission, um, we're down about an employee and a half on the uh, recreation side. So, um, you know, going into the future, filling, uh, filling that staff. Um, good news and bad news, passive uh, recreation use is up. Um, but as more people come into the facilities, uh, the more demand that we have. Um, rentals, we've also seen a large increase in facility rentals, whether it be ball fields or uh, pavilions. So as we move forward, um, you know, we're in the midst of working on our five-year master plan where we're identifying uh, our community needs. Uh, one of the main things uh, that um, was part of the strategic plan. So going forward into next year, uh, part of the funding, we'll work on a pathways master plan that will also um, tie in with our five-year master plan. Uh, we'll be looking at facility upgrades. Uh, we'll continue with ball fields, uh, sports fields, playgrounds, uh, looking at a splash pad. And we're going to be working with our professional service contractors to identify conditions of our facilities. Uh, and going forward, it's going to be very important to cultivate partnerships and uh, sponsorships to fill any of those budget gaps. And then he just runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me why that blacked out again. I can't. Uh, let's see. That was the last one. Oh, next steps. Um, you're going to still see later this year, probably at the next meeting in two weeks, um, the DPW budget, which we handed out before. We still have to walk you through that budget. Um, obviously, it's very complicated, but it is enterprise funds. Um, you're not required to pass a budget for the enterprise funds. We always ask that you do when you approve the budget, that you approve the DPW budget, the water and sewer budget, uh, at the same time, because I think it's important. It's tied to uh, the board looks at as part of your overall package, what our fees that we set and what we requested for, so you have a chance to look at those, um, whether our plans for our master plans for DPW are in line with what you guys expect to see. Part of that's predicated on the master plan and what we've done with uh, future land use map, that kind of thing. But all those are important. Um, and we have from today, October 5th, until December 31st to approve this budget. How you guys want to go about that is totally up to you. If you'd like to have us back for certain departments that you want to see a little bit more, or if you want to um, have a Q&A, you want to just come in and, and do one-on-ones, we're here to, to do whatever it requires of uh, you guys, whatever, however we have to get you through this process, um, especially you know your first time through uh, a full process like this, it can um, be somewhat daunting. Uh, you don't know what you don't know when you start going through this thing. Um, but we do know we've got to hold a truth and taxation hearing. What that's going to do is talk a little bit about, you know, when you guys approved that 4029 at the last meeting, that was for the, these are the millages that are going to support the budget that you're going to approve. You still do a truth and taxation. You know, people to come in and talk to you about the millages that you're collecting. Then we hold the public hearings. They'll come in, and then you adopt the budget. Um, we can do that next meeting, November, December, totally up to you when you hit your comfort level. Um, and at this point, uh, we're wide open and available for any questions that you might have for us. We'd be happy to answer right now as an administrative team. Do you have any questions? I thought the uh, presentations were very uh, succinct, and I think you know we're going to have to take some time to go through you know looking at the budget. But I think uh, the narratives that you provided this evening, kind of an overview of what. Uh, 
you see uh, for the next year is, is important to this board. And obviously the strategic plan, uh, we're probably each of us are just seeing if our, our projects uh, are going to have the staffing and funding they need to make them happen. I'm sure Mr. Lehman is making sure of that as well. But um, I have to agree that having a strategic plan I think uh, probably helped uh, Mr. Lehm at a uh, meeting with each of our department heads to figure out, hey, what, where does the board want to go in each of these departments? So um, I think that was good for us to outline to, uh, to make sure that our priorities line up. Mr. Fike. I have a question <clears throat> for Dennis. Uh, under the general office section of this budget, it lists the new employees, and there's nine of them. Is that accurate? A new assessing director, director of information services, planning and zoning administrator, lead mechanic. Yeah, replacing <clears throat> for employees who left. Oh, so these are additional employees. Yeah. All right. So how many additional employees are we budgeted um, for? I can tell you that there's <clears throat> a request for additional employees from the police department, parks and recreation, uh, human resources. <clears throat> I rejected all of those requests um, because I had to to make this budget balance, um, unfortunately, and if money were no object, we would have added those people. It's no, I mean, we're down about 12 people from where we were in 2007, mm -hmm. uh, but that's out of necessity. And uh, you, know, you hear that do more with less. Well, we're, we're kind of topped out. Um, we've got a new, you know, we revamped the code enforcement so that there will be three uh, part-time instead of we only had one part-time, so you really got two part-time code enforcement. Mm -hmm. Um, HR assistant was a new employee part-time. Deputy fire chief. Deputy fire chief went from part-time to full-time. Am I missing anything else? I think that's Alex. it. Okay. Uh, so the other thing was, you've te said it before, but maybe it bears repeating. We did get some money from the federal government. Um, can you explain how much that is, when we're going to get it, and what our strings are attached to it? So with the funds that we received on September 22nd, I think, we, have, we got $1.8 million. Out of that $1.8 million, that's 50% of what we're expected to get. Um, anybody who turns money back in, it could mean we get a little bit more before the year is out, uh, which is great. Some people just turned down the money. They just didn't have the ability to spend it. Uh, the strings attached to it, um, if you can do revenue replacement, it's wide open. So they have a calculator that they provide, and actually uh, a lot of places did plant brand, uh, GFOA, uh, so that you could try to show that you had uh, a loss due to COVID. So that revenue replacement, if you can show that, then you could have used that money for pretty much anything you wanted. The one caveat is you can't use it for unfunded liabilities, no matter what. Um, unfortunately for the revenue replacement, uh, we're in a little bit of a catch-22 there. Because we took on Parks and Recreation in February of 2020, so we try to show that we had uh, a loss of revenue from 2020 using 2019 as the base year. We didn't have a Parks and Recreation Department in 2019, so when we run the calculator, we're running a, a calculator that shows 2019, and we can't use those because those that were a complete standalone entity as the Parks and Rec Commission. So that burned us. It, it hurts us. If we had, if it had been apples to apples, we would have been able to show that it would have freed up some of that money. So that's my long way of getting to the point of saying, what are we going to spend the money on? Right now, unless they change the rules or we can figure out another way to rerun that revenue calculator, water, sewer, or broadband infrastructure. Those are the three main ones. Yeah. And who knows, the rules may change uh, before. They, like the CARES Act money did, and they, it, they changed as they went, and they found out people couldn't spend the money. Not that we can't spend the money on water and sewer infrastructure. We can. Obviously, I would much rather see it used for general fund uh, than on enterprise funds because we're well-funded in our uh, enterprise funds. Um, we've got a really solid long-term plan about how, when we're going to build out and when, you know, how, what that looks like and what we're going to bond, what we're going to pay cash for. Uh, I'd love to be able to, I wish they loosened this up a little bit more. I'm still hoping that they do. Um, but if they don't, you guys approved $9.3 million for the KCI project, and we could put that money right up there. We've got the Tech Village project where we've committed to putting $3 million worth of infrastructure in the ground 
for water and sewer mains if a developer comes in and builds the road and we are meeting with a developer at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for that property so you know we would be able to use those funds there so we'll have use we have till December 31st of 2024 they just changed they were asking for the first report on how you intended to spend the money by October 30th of of this year they push that till the spring now so we have time to decide and even then they won't hold it to it you you, you got till december 31st 2024 to come up with a solid plan on how to spend uh that money i've got a couple of the Go questions sorry to hog all the questions uh regarding the police station did i hear did you say we spent seven hundred thousand dollars a year on the new police station we do and that will be paid off in 2031 my first year here 2015 uh we did a, a bond reissue for the police station paid off a couple million dollars more and then uh, reissued those bonds saved another couple million by doing that uh, but it still puts us out to 2031 uh, before that uh, bond is is uh, completely paid off for the buildings paid off just one more now about the fire station uh you're in the design phase what is that projected to cost or have we gotten that far yet well that depends if you're asking me or if you're asking uh, chief burdett i could ask the chief <laughs> if he's here uh... right now there's about a two and a half million dollar discrepancy oh all right <laughs> <laughs> for the whole building uh, we budgeted about thirty-five thousand dollars for just that phase for the design. no but the total building the total cost building is, is, is looking at five is five million dollars okay and then that he talked a little bit about the reno for station number two on baldwin road and that's looking at about three hundred and eighty thousand dollars okay thank you You're welcome good questions <laughs> anybody else have any questions for mr limita we'll have some other opportunities coming up that will depend on what department uh, your questions are we can always bring in the department head for that and again, these guys will make ourselves available to whatever you guys need to have happen as far as getting your questions answered. Reach out directly. You'll notice that in this presentation, I did not include a slide deck for the clerk's office or the treasurer's office. Generally, we don't do that in our presentation because they are elected uh, board members. They're right here. We assume that, you know, uh, as colleagues, you can reach out to them. Also, their budgets are pretty stable. There's not a lot that you're gonna look at cutting. Treasurer's budget is a treasurer's budget. It's pretty steady and stable. Same thing with the clerk. Uh, you know, when we talked about those mandated things we have to do, we have to collect taxes and we uh, have to administer elections. And so those budgets are pretty stable, uh, it, but I'm sure these guys, and they also have other, both of their deputies are here tonight. If there's any board questions that you'd like to ask in regards to the clerk or treasurer's budget, they're both available also um, to answer those questions for you tonight or at any other time. Okay. Seeing no further questions, uh, I think uh, we'd like to thank all the department heads and Mr. Limita for uh, being here and putting together the presentation, Ms. Roberts, Mr. Beller. We appreciate uh, all of you being here uh, this evening. Um, what I'd like to do, Mr. Lima, is just take like a two-minute break, let uh, any of the department heads that want to uh, depart uh, depart, and uh, take just a two-minute break for the board. Also, what I'm going to ask when the board reconvenes, um, I would like to see if anybody would be opposed to moving item G, which is a board resolution with regard to Granville Estates uh, special assessment, if we could consider that next. Uh, Miss Nancy Stilson, the deputy uh, treasurer, is, is here, but uh, if we could cover that, uh, she has an early morning, and I know she's been burning the candle at both ends here at the township. So if we could take care of that as our next order of business, um, I'd appreciate it. So let's take a two-minute break if that's acceptable, and any of the department heads who want to depart, we'll be back in two minutes. Yeah, my question. <laughs> you're, the, you're the same thing I had. Yeah. I knew, especially with the new board, that it would be something else going in. It was long, but it was kind of like, hey, I mean, you guys just don't know it. Thanks, fellas. I can't eat more than five candy bars in one night. <laughs> I took two more. <laughs> Well, so what they're going to do is adopt, adopt that resolution, and 
And that gives the authority. We don't we won't be accepted. But you got me. I did. I've never seen a rate. I I was blown away. Mr. Jones, you have point six. Well, that makes it not so bad. But that's for late. Administrative. Oh, the administrative. Yeah. Then late. I think late. Tonight, all we're asking to do is approve the resolution to move forward to uh, issue forms, correct? We're not choosing the person. No. Correct. I'm dragging. Yeah. Well, I got a. Well, yeah. So, but then. She got a Supreme Court case in the morning, so my brain's. Yeah. Thinking about that. Unbelievable. At 2.33, I'm like, well, that's not bad. <laughs> You're fine. Thanks for hanging out with us. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Jeremy Jones. It is. Well, from now on, call him Mr. Firefighter Bob. No, no, that's too easy. Oh, that's too easy. I told him, I said, it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow. Well, listen, there are going to be more. <laughs> forgive, but don't forget. One time Sears called him Firefighter Bob or Fireman Bob. Uh, and that resolution. Was He's like, in a board meeting, he like, and authorized. Uh, that's a great question for Fireman Bob. <laughs> like, Fireman Bob? <laughs> so, what will be other Thank you, Jeremy. No, we'll get that all. That's all I need to know. Yeah, I got you. Sharp. Go ahead. I like your jacket. I turned mine off. I just turned it back on. Oh, well, that's perfect. All right. You know, I would have had a cup of coffee, but I don't want to screw up my sleep if I. Yeah, no, I like, can't do that. It's one of those weird. I couldn't. It was. It's the. It's a very unpleasant case. But I mean, they don't usually go to the Supreme Court unless they are. No, that's so remarkable. Of course, you can't get a picture of you in there, can you? No, I'm on Zoom. Oh, you're on still, Zoom? We're still doing it on Zoom. It's good. I think we're ready to get going. I'm not even there. I'm a little irritated about that. But. Well, you're young. You're going to be there again. Okay, I think we're going to... Ready to rock and roll? I think we're getting ready to start again here, guys. Rock and roll! <laughs> <coughs> All right, calling the meeting to order. They don't want to I think we're going to get rolling here, guys. Yeah. All right. All right, I think we're ready to start. Hold on. Not Scott. Yes. Check person. Okay. All right. Oh, you tell me when you're ready to call. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, reconvening at 8.35. Okay, thank you. Next on the agenda, I've asked to uh, move item G, which is uh, the board will consider resolution 2132 to authorize the bonds for the Granville Estate Subdivision Special Assessment District. Uh, Mr. Laddie, would you like to explain to the board? Sure, the I will. And if I leave anything out, then hopefully uh, Nancy Stilson will help me out and add the information. But tonight you have um, a resolution that authorizes really the acceptance of uh, the bids for the bonds for the Granville Estate Subdivision uh, District. And this district is a, is a long running district, uh, familiar to m most of you and, and some of you in particular. But um, there's good news. First of all, um, I understand the project is, is finished with maybe some uh, punch list exceptions. Uh, but importantly, through um, uh, Roger um, Sweat's efforts at Dickinson Wright, we have um, gotten um, three bids for the bonds, and uh, they are very favorable. And, and what uh, we would like you to do tonight is, is consider um, adopting the resolution that is a part of your packet um, that is resolution 31 or 2132, and that gives the authority to the supervisor um, the treasurer and the clerk to accept the lowest uh, bond uh, bids that we receive. And um, so if you're, if you're so inclined um, it, to consider that resolution, uh, that will allow them to accept the bids. And the bids <clears> were, were very favorable. In fact, Ms. Stilson, do we, was our low bid like 1.6% or something like that? Ha have you ever seen no. that low an amount? I mean, it's really a tremendous amount. For the, the, the bids. Yeah. So, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them. Otherwise, we'll. Uh... I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Motion by Mr. Fike, support by Ms. Hugo. Motion by Fike, yeah. supported by Hugo. I believe that the next lowest was 2.3 or something like that, right? That was, the was it? The next one was 1.9. Okay. So, motion by Fike. Very good. Supported by Hugo. Any other discussion? Okay. Mr. Robertson. Uh, I'll take the roll then, if you would, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Uh, myself, yes. Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Congratulations to uh, Ms. Hugo also, who uh, worked hard on that in her neighborhood. Ms. Hugo. I was actually ask, going to ask if I could yeah. make a comment. Um, I just wanted to thank Director Sears for putting up with myself, <laughs> as well as um, some of my neighbors. We had a lot of questions when this process was going on because our roads had never, had not been paved in 47-ish years. Um, anytime a resident had a concern, if they came to me, I addressed it with um, Director Sears and he was always willing to give me the answer or get the answer for me and they really did do a very nice job i know you've you've been down our streets and um we're looking forward to getting many years out of them so thank you and especially since uh, i think it was turned down at least one time before maybe it was and um i would also like to mention that the previous board did vote to move forward um, with this project so thanks to them as well yep. well great job okay the next item on the agenda, the item B, under new business, the board will consider resolution 2129 adding a street light to the intersection of Grand Blank Road and Bicentennial Park, authorize the payment of $100 and authorize the township superintendent to execute all related contracts and documents. Mr. Sears. <laughs> So this is a street light that was requested by a resident who recently built a home on Graham Lake Road right across the street from the park entrance. Um, she stated that at night it's very difficult to see. Um, it's not really related to the park entrance itself, but it's just a very dark area. Uh, we get these requests now and then, and most of the time we can accommodate them. So um, I reached out to consumers, they designed it, and here we are. Probably isn't a bad idea to have one there near the entrance, though. So it'll definitely help the park out. Also, it's in very right. close proximity. So. Right. <clears throat> Any discussion? 
Okay. Thank you, Clerk Thank Robertson. You. you care to call the roll? I will call the roll. Uh, Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee Fike? Yes. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Uh, Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Myself? Yes. Treasurer Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Okay. Next item. Board will item C. The board will consider a resolution 2130 from Consumers Energy to remove the sixth street light from the Rondale street lighting project and authorize the township superintendent to execute all related agreements and documents. Mr. Sears. So the board previously approved this project to install street lights on Rondale Drive. Uh, before installation, consumers realized that one of the poles that was supposed to accommodate a street light, in fact, cannot accommodate a street light. So their solution right now, in order to get the lights installed uh, soon, is to remove the sixth and last light, which is closest to the dead end, uh, from the project for right now. And then uh, they'll send it back to design to look and see, A, if there's another pole that's viable, they don't think there is right now, and B, how much it would cost to install a pole to put the sixth light on um, so that those residents down there Right. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, someone care to make the motion? Make the motion. Mr. Fike, uh, support by Mr. White. Right, and White support. Okay, Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Hugo? Yes. Trustee White? Yes. Trustee Fike? Yes. Myself? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Uh, Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Uh, seven nothing, motion passes. Thank you. Item D, the consideration of resolution 2131 authorizing fireworks for the holiday tree lighting. Uh, Mr. Linehan. As part of the 2021 uh, holiday tree lighting, we're partnering with Elder Credit Union, who uh, will be donating $5,000. Any questions for Mr. Linehan? Sounds great. Congratulations on the uh, sponsorship for it, too. Very good. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll so. make the motion if it's in order, Mr. Supervisor. Absolutely. Supported by Mr. Right. Fike. Supported by Mr. Fike. <clears throat> okay. Uh, record roll call. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Myself. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Linhan. Next, uh, item E, the board will consider a motion to award a campus fiber replacement project to Tioma Systems not to exceed $17,723 and authorize the township superintendent to execute all related contracts and documents. Uh, we have Mr. Lucevelt. Um, this resolution or this motion will essentially allow uh, me to have 
you'll let your seat come through and replace the fiber, and we will have <coughs> 20 gig connection which will be pound shit right through all the buildings around there, and then a redundant connection in case one of those fails, it will still go fail down to the 10 gigabyte connection. Currently, most of these connections run under one gigabyte, um, and it's definitely a, um, uh, a, a slow point to that once removed, we're going to see it like that. Okay. Mr. Reardon? I'll make that motion. Okay. Supported by Mr. Fike. Motion by Raritan, supported by Fike. Any Record discussion? roll call. Any other discussion? Okay. Trustee, tr may I? Yes, go ahead. Trustee White. Yes. Trustee Raritan. Yes. Trustee Fike. Yes. Trustee Hugo. Yes. Myself, yes. Super or Treasurer Kilmer. Yes. Supervisor Bennett. Yes. Seven nothing. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Lucifer. Item F, the board will consider a motion to approve a policy for board compensation. Um, we've uh, been discussing this for quite a while, which I think in part was to give the public uh, plenty of time to weigh in if they had any uh, thoughts on this. Um, we didn't want to uh, ram something through. We wanted to make sure that it was carefully considered. Um, I think by... Um, all estimates that it was an important issue that uh, we needed to tackle and nobody wanted to kick it down the road any further, but we wanted to also make sure that the public scrutiny occurred. And I think by us uh, examining this for the first, I don't know, the past six months anyways, um, I think we gave plenty of opportunity for the public to weigh in on, on this policy and the other things that we'll consider this evening. So um, any thoughts on uh, the policy, Mr. Limina? Other than the policy is a direct result of the conversations that the Board Compensation Review Committee had, and it's really about setting something so that um, you never fall behind in compensation review again. Uh, that what all this policy is doing is it's saying that uh, it's going to cover all compensation, not only for the Township Board, but all committees, commissions, uh, et cetera. Every four years, and uh, again, the, the policy's recommendation is that it's the year before a general election or before a presidential election, because that's when all the township board members get elected, that you'll go through the review and that there will be one resolution for each of the four positions, the three officers and then the trustees at all. So this really will establish it so that it never falls behind again every four years, at least as a minimum. Uh, Every board from here and, and the folks who are after you are going to stop and take a look and just do a comparison of, of how you guys compare to like-minded uh, municipalities. And I think it's so long overdue, and this really is, formalizes this process so nobody gets put into the position that you guys find yourselves in uh, this evening. Mr. Lehman, in your research of this uh, topic with the township, uh, did you see where there was a policy like this in the past or was it followed any time and i know we said it was 25 years since the last or 20 years minimum there it, that's what's sorely been missing is a is a policy to address it um you know you guys are are really turning out to be a great governing board and you got to govern yourself sometimes and that includes forcing your hand into into making difficult decisions by doing it like what we're recommending in this policy, I think it really does. There's, there's never been anything like this adopted by a township board in Grand Blank Township. And this is really making a, a statement that you guys took your role seriously and it's gonna be reviewed every four years. So I, I would really strongly urge the board to consider adoption of the, of the policy as presented. I know that several other townships are considering this as well. We received uh, salary surveys, I believe, in the past several weeks uh, from other municipalities in our area. Yes, Mr. Reardon. I'd make a motion that we adopt the policy as submitted. Okay. Support by Mr. Fike. Any discussion? So the, the policy basically, in a nutshell for the public, um, is that this board will review. Um, and We've got Mr. Laddie here. So, Mr. Laddie, I'll let you uh, explain what um, this policy does, uh, in essence. Well, it, it recognizes the responsibility of the board to review and set its compensation. And Mike, there's, there are a couple different ways that compensation can be set. 
But this board and traditionally Grand Lake Township boards have taken responsibility, although not timely, um, to review the compensation and set it for the office. And so what this does is it just tells you, it reminds you really, that you've, you've accepted the responsibility of reviewing at least every four years the compensation for these positions. And as, as Superintendent Lima, Lima pointed out, this, this has gone uh, wanting for so long that it's put you in a bad spot. And so uh, this will just keep you and other boards on track, to make sure that, that um, future boards don't fall into the same predicament that you're in now. Okay. Any questions, concerns? Okay, it's just, it looks like it's a motion and not necessarily a resolution. So at this time, um, okay. um, do you have a motion to support? Now, a, a, a question I'm drawn here that we're adopting a policy for review. Okay, we are, the, the policy does not dictate when we would review or when we would, when we would set the, 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 the compensation levels. There's Mr. nothing Patty. in this that, that sets that. As I recall, it just says that, that at least every four years. Is that Seating the next presidential election. Yeah. So before each presidential election at least. Yeah. We do it more, but that would be the minimum. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Appreciate the clarification. Okay. Um, All in favor, say aye. Are you, record roll call. Um, it's a motion. We don't motion. we don't need one at this point. Okay. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We've covered item G. Okay. Um, on to item H. The board will consider resolution twenty one thirty three to increase township trustee compensation from the current amount of five thousand seven hundred two dollars and seventy five cents a year to thirteen thousand two hundred fifty seven dollars a year. I handed out uh, today, I, I received uh, via email, um, one of the municipalities, I don't recall who it was, I think it's uh, Flushing Township. Uh, yes, it is. I see who the uh, supervisor's name on here. But anyways, uh, the uh, salary survey that uh, basically Flushing Township uh, conducted for townships for pretty much, looks like about 15 townships here in the area. Um, I just went through and circled uh, the townships, that, all of them, that the trustees uh, are paid more than uh, Grand Blank Township. I'll just list off their names, but uh, we've talked about Davison previously. Um, Flint Township, uh, Genesee Township, Mount Morris Township, Mundy Township, Richfield Township, and Thetford uh, Township. Well, Thetford actually is right at about the same amount as us um yes Supervisor, the dollar amount in here 6904 for grand blank township is incorrect it's um 59 okay yeah so that is incorrect so th oh. yeah so thatford township is and uh atlas township and atlas are both uh so atlas and thatford does anybody know where thatford is <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Northern Genesee County. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, uh, I'm just, I just listed off all those municipalities that their town, their trustees uh, are paid more. Certainly, none of you took the position. Um, I don't believe for financial gain. Um, it's that uh, you wanted to help uh, make a difference in our municipality. Um, we are spending uh, plenty of time outside of these board meetings uh, conducting business. I know that um, as the strategic plan starts to uh, uh, take motion, and, and we are starting to do that each meeting, we're reporting on it. Um, just for example, we had the North uh, Grand Blank uh, business owners meet, and uh, uh, we, I think we had probably 35 property owners in here. Um, it was quite a phenomenal meeting where we saw a lot of uh, positive energy. But the bottom line is we're going to see more and more of that. We have a building committee that is working on um, the new facilities. Um, and the list goes on. When you look at that strategic plan that we put together, um, it isn't just going to be staff uh, driven as far as uh, how that happens. It's going to take uh, board interaction working with staff to make those things happen. So. I see this board being uh, a working board more than ever, but we also are going to have a plan that, uh, that we're working off, and so it's going to make us much more efficient at accomplishing uh, goals that we've, we've set out. Um, 
you know, one of the things that I just mentioned that in looking back in that uh, when the last uh, raise was given to the trustees, Mr. Lemina, that was what, approximately 20 years ago, did we say? We can't find the resolution authorizing the last change to uh, trustees uh, salary. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we tried doing search of everything, electronic meeting packets, everything. We can't find it. I think it's, it goes back at least 20 years, unless yeah. David's got yeah. other information that I don't possess. But we right. tried to do a, a complete record search, and we can't even find the resolution. Mm -hmm. It has to be it's 20 years. Yeah. I think uh, in just a, a quick uh, view of our taxable value, I believe right now you mentioned earlier in our, our report earlier this evening in your presentation that we're at about 1.8 million or 1.8 SEV of 1.8 billion dollars so true cash value you know double that mm -hmm. and back uh, probably at least 20 years ago if we looked at 20 years ago we were about half of that so we'd be looking at about 900 million in taxable value so in 20 years we've doubled our taxable value um, which uh, is substantial uh, and uh, yet Yet uh, we've held the pay constant for the trustees. Um, although at the last board we did do a bonus or how, whatever we want to call it, but it wasn't a raise, it was a bonus. Um, so um, I think the last board also recognized that something needed to be done. Um, and that was carried through when, when this board was elected. Um, why do we pick the 90th percentile? You know, I think uh, where where do we want to be? You know, do we want to be at the 50th percentile? Do we want to be at the low end? Um, I um, I believe that we want to uh, compensate our trustees because we want them to be able to put the time in, and their time is valuable. Um, so, um, any other thoughts, Mr. Uh, I thought you had your hand up, Mr. Robertson. Well, uh, I guess the question is is I can I, I I have some some empathy for the fact that the trustees have not been you know the salary has been updated in 20 years mm -hmm. um, but we in in the discussions we've had over the last few months and our, a couple of few of the trustees have expressed reservations or ambivalence about making changes in their compensation in the term that we are in so from my is 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 this uh, I mean, if, if we're setting a, a, a compensation for the new term, for for not this term, not the one that we are currently in, but for the term for the for the board that is going to be elected in 2024, that's one thing. And not the other thing is is doing it for for the existing board. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this has all been part of the discussion, and I'm wondering because I'm wondering what what uh, your thoughts and opinions are, Mr. Supervisor. Well, I think what was being considered is for starting with this term um, and the policy going into effect for the next term uh, that we would set, you know, whatever, if there would be any increase. Or it could be decreases, too, because the policy that I'm looking at that we just passed isn't just to say we're going to consider raises. It's going to consider um, everything. You know, for example, the supervisor position um, it was said earlier uh, this evening that it's a part-time position, which I think we, we with the last board, we, we had that discussion at nauseum that there is no elected officer that is elected part-time. When you're elected to a position, you're elected to that position. Um, when Mr. Limita's departure came about, uh, unfortunately, last uh, term, um, the elected official, meaning me in that position, uh, stepped up and was working full time at this position, um, you know. And um, so, you know, when people call me on Saturday morning or Friday night um, with an issue, um, I don't say, "Hey, you know what? I only work part time. I'm not taking that call." Um, and it's kind of the same with, you know, the thoughts on part time legislature is uh, people want their elected officials to be available to them. Uh, well, hey, you know what? I only work nine till noon. Um, you're going to have to call me next week on my day that I'm working. No. So, um, with regard to part time or whatever, um, you know, the number of hours that you put in, it's what you put in. I mean, and what you make of it. Uh, from what I can see, that uh, the trustees we have are are putting in the time, putting in the homework, 
And uh, uh, while I'm not for giving bonuses, I think uh, this board, you know, it, it's it's almost humorous looking at this list of the municipalities that uh, and what we're paying ours. Um, so um, I think that our trustees are, are due an increase. I would support it. Any thoughts? Mr. White? I would support it. We've had, I think we had four committee meetings. We've probably talked at least that many times at, at the board meeting. I mean, we're, we're raising the floor, and then once we get this policy, which we just passed, in place, then we've, we're setting the, the benchmarks for people going forward, for boards going forward. I guess that's how I look at it. We're not doing this for us. We're doing it for, really, the next board, almost. So they don't have to deal with this issue. Again, we can take the heat or whatever if there is heat. I don't go on Facebook, but I'm sure there's heat on there. Yes, Ms. Hugo. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was, I was trying to get uh -huh. um, I do go on Facebook, and there have been, um, you know, some residents express some concerns regarding our compensation, regarding um, what our duties are, and I'm going to agree with Scott on the fact that are we contacted outside of our I mean we don't really have business hours for you know for our positions um, is some of us many of us are on many different committees many of us have families many of us have jobs um, so it is an extension of our day but we do get phone calls we do get text messages we do get emails we do get messages on Facebook we are constantly serving our community but on the other hand, I, as you all know, um, I don't feel comfortable giving myself a raise. That's I just don't. Do I think that we all deserve it? Yes, but I am just not comfortable myself, even though Jude wants to kick me under the table. <laughs> um, I just am not comfortable myself doing it. And it's nothing against any anyone in the public or anything that the public says, anything that any of you say. It's just my own personal thought. I'm sorry. That's understandable. Mr. Gilmer? I guess when when would you be comfortable? I mean, I understand that. So, you know, if we... we um, approve this policy we approve this policy for board compensation and i would personally agree that in the future for the future board to get you know whatever amount we set in place i'd be fine with that and i will be honest and tell all of you which i know i've told a few of you before when i ran for this job or position I did not know that there was any compensation, despite what anyone in the public thinks, um, because I know that we have had some heat from some people, but I just did it because I like our community and I wanted to make a difference, so. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of vitriol over this issue. I've seen maybe one comment uh, on social media at least that I've addressed, but. Well, and the public was invited to come and speak regarding this, and I think we've had maybe one say yes and one say Well, actually, I think we've had three say yes and maybe one or two say no. I actually, um, I didn't uh, public comment, and I, I failed to do so, but I, I did receive a, an email that said, uh, can you please include this in public comment at the October 5th, 2021 board meeting? My name is Maria Hobson. My address is 8389 Parkside Drive here in Grand Blank Township. I would simply like to express my support for both the trustee wage increase and the supervisor wage increase. This is well overdue and well deserved. So, Anyways. you know that the, the um, I know that it's uncomfortable for individuals to vote on their own pay. Um, and this is a can that's been kicked down the road for 
years. Um, I understand that there there probably are some board members that um, don't want to uh, go that route, but I also believe that there's a number who do. Um, you know, I was asked, well, why why we stick this on the agenda? Because we we've, we've talked about it forever, and we're going to put it to rest uh, this evening. My hope is one way or the other, and move on. Uh, we've we've provided plenty of public opportunity opportunity for public input. Um, we've we've looked at all the comparisons. Um, we've talked about what the duties are. Um, so I think it's time to make a decision. And while it it's not uh, Politically popular, maybe, but on the other hand, we, we haven't heard, um, in fact, even with the last board, with the, the bonus, uh, the individuals I heard from said it wasn't the fact that they weren't deserving, it was that, uh, you know, the manner in which it was done. And so I think um, what we're looking at here um, puts you in line with uh, municipalities, actually doesn't even put you above uh, the municipalities that, that we're looking at, put you above several of them, but not all of them. So, Mr. Reardon. I, I have one comment first. Uh, that Mr. Laddie last time said, you do it because it's the right thing and it's the appropriate thing to do. So I just, I just want to say that. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to make a motion that we adopt this resolution uh, as presented effective immediately. Support? Yes. Support by Kilmer. Okay. Um, support. I'm, I've, uh, excuse me. Motion by Raridan. Support by Kilmer. Okay. And, and can I just? Yes, go ahead, Mr. White. When we say immediately, are we saying like tomorrow or are we saying for the next, next fiscal year? For 2022, yeah. I wrote the motion that it it would start if you adopted tonight. It would it would start the next payroll. Okay, and it is budgeted for the next year. next year, and we'll require a budget amendment for this year. But um, mm -hmm. you know, you'll have amendments coming before you in the next meeting or the meeting after that. So I mean, it would be one that comes for the amount that would change. Uh, for the Right. Balance of 2021. Yep. And again, you know, the, the policy that we passed, I'm not just looking at uh, whether or not we, uh, you know, it's not just raises, it's going to look at, I think that that policy, we, we need to look at each of the positions and reevaluate uh, how those are compensated, positive or negative. So, um, okay. any other thoughts on it? Okay. Mr. Robertson? Uh, Trustee Fike? No. Trustee White? Yes. Trustee Hugo? No. Trustee Raritan? Yes. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Myself? No. Supervisor Bennett? Yes. Okay. 4 3, motion passes. Now I'm putting on my, my supervisor hat. And, uh, um, while I believe that this position is uh, worthy of increase, um, you know, you look at uh, the compensation for the clerk and the treasurer, um, and then look at the township supervisor position. Um, and my, my wife wanted to come and speak this evening. I told her not to because she knows how many hours uh, I put in. And I'm not uh, pat, wanting to pat myself on the back, but, uh, you know, the, the, uh, GDL, the library board, recently did a, a video and kind of outlined, um, and with my wife being on that board, I, I got to see a little bit of it, but it, um, it showed what goes on on a daily basis in terms of uh, the running of uh, the GDL. Um, I wish that uh, there was some kind of video that kind of showed the operations of the township and all that's involved, not that... that uh, um, I'm saying that that involves me. I'm just saying that uh, um, during the course of the day, I do spend an inordinate amount of time uh, looking at emails. Uh, I can't tell you how many emails I get a day. It's at least 150, I would guess. Um, and, and not all of them spam. 
but uh, the position also serves uh, as a um, representative or as a board member to numerous boards outside of here. So while you see me at this board meeting, um, I see a lot of you know our faces that whether it's the uh, 911 consortium, which I serve as treasurer, and also we have committee meetings associated with 911. Um, with the Genesee County Drain Commission, they have the advisory board. I also serve as a director for that, um, which involves uh, meetings and committee meetings. Um, and the list goes on of those outside groups. The Road Commission has an advisory board. Um, Mr. Lehman and I talk uh, numerous times a day. Uh, I'm in here daily. Um, spend time with department heads, uh, developers that want to meet, uh, people that have issues that they want uh, me to walk them through the process with a department head, what have you. Um, the list goes on, but believe me, um, when, we, when we do consider this at the end of the year, you know, at this policy for next term, or at the end of this term, um, I would say that um, that that dollar amount does need to increase uh, because uh, while some people may feel it's a part-time position, um, there is no part-time elected position. I can tell you that, uh, you know, after serving as your supervisor for four years and now an additional year, I can say that um, the people that we touch and the policies that we create as a board um, affect people in such a, here locally, so much more than I think even on the state level. And that's no disservice to uh, Mr. Robertson and his his service at the state level, but the decisions we're making at the local level, um, we're on the front lines here. And um, when people have an issue with recycling, it, it could be uh, you would, you know, some may laugh that, that you know that that's a, a low level issue, but for some people, that's um, tantamount to uh, basically taking their vehicle or their driver's license mm -hmm. away. But um, flooding issues, you name it. When people have an issue, this, this township is dealing with those things on the front line, our police, fire, um, all those things. But um, I'm going to say that I, I feel uncomfortable, as Sarah does, um, in that uh, <coughs> I didn't run for this position to um, gain financially. I, I ran for it. Um, and I'll just say this, I was concerned about the Dort Highway extension coming down uh, near my home. I got involved because of that. and. Uh, Ran for supervisor because I saw a void happening there when Miss Hoffman uh, was retiring, and uh, um, it, it does take a toll on the business that I have. But uh, I love the township and I love what I do here, and um, I appreciate working with such a, a cohesive board. But I am not going to uh, vote in favor of, of this resolution. I just want to say that that uh, um, so I probably said enough, but. Mr. Reardon. So uh, it pains me to say this, but since about 1983, I have been part of the township working in some capacity here. Uh, and that's the part that pains me. Uh, but the, uh, the, I've seen supervisors, quite a few of them. I can name them all. And I will tell you right now that you do more work or as, I'm gonna stick with more work than uh, anybody. And right now you, you get about 20 some percent of uh, whatever the clerk and treasurer make. And so if you're thinking part time, maybe you would, that would be maybe 50%. Uh, but at that, you, you do a tremendous amount of work, and 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 I think it sells you, you uh, short. I, I mean, I understand you not wanting to support it, uh, but and the, the uncomfortableness. But you deserve it, you know, as much as any more than anybody. So, like, I'd like to make a motion uh, to vote on this. Okay. I'll support to, uh, if I was okay. going to ask whether or not. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll get a support and then we'll get further discussion. Support by Mr. Reardon. Mr. Reardon. I was going to ask Robertson. the opposite. Since in, in light of this, your, your position, do you wish to have the resolution withdrawn? If it's, if it's uh, voted in favor of, I'm going to uh, meet with uh, Mr. Laddie and see what my options are in terms of uh, 
what I do with it, um, whether I donate it or uh, return it or how that works. So we can explore that, but this resolution is the township board's op resolution. So it isn't, with all due respect, it's not yours to pull off the table. If the township right. board wants to, as a majority, they can. Um, I, I just want to make one point for all the reasons that we talked about with the trustee position, it's also important for your office as well. And I say office because it isn't just you, the person that puts in the effort. It's, it's, it's the, the compensation of the, of the position. And one more point to a comment made earlier tonight regarding the uh, health care um, that it, it, it has always been that the <clears throat> that the supervisors had the ability to participate in a township health care supervisor supervisor Ziddle did when he voluntarily agreed to reduce his salary when we created the position of superintendent and boy, they were late in doing that and it turns out that that the the, the complexity of the township um, and the level of service has really improved greatly under the under the superintendent model. But it didn't ever mean that Supervisor Zittle or Supervisor Hoffman or, or Supervisor Bennett had less to do. And 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 so the and the the, the compensation Zittle had uh, health care. He had the option to participate in health care when he um, reduced his salary. We never took that health care out of that position. And and in fact, we reiterated that when you became supervisor. At the um, at the decreased rate, um, it was we, the the board acknowledged that uh, healthcare was a part of that office's compensation. And in fact, when when Ms. Hoffman didn't accept it because she had healthcare in other places, she received a stipend for it. So from Ziddle through Hoffman through Bennett, it's always had healthcare associated. <coughs> so that is not a new thing, and that is not an additional thing. I just want to make sure <coughs> that point is made. And I'll also just throw in one more unsolicited comment that when you had to operate without a superintendent, you were here, you, 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 you filled in the best you could with your, your greatest degree of effort. And that shouldn't be forgotten by the previous township board or this township board. Um, and so again, with all due respect, I, this is the township board's motion. It's not yours to, to pull back. Um, thank you for the clarification procedurally. I've, Kind of relying on my old old, well, I, I old life. It was a fair question, fair point. But Mr. Pike, I have no. You had your hand up. No. Any other comments? If you will, Mr. Supervisor, the board. Most of you know I have served as an elected supervisor, and I've served as an appointed superintendent. So I've been on both sides of the dais, and um, you know, and I appreciate what. Uh, Mr. Bennett said about, you know, he, he would explore his options. Um, I'm really glad and appreciative of the board uh, to move forward and, and increase the trustees uh, salary. I love what Mr. Yancho had to say about when you want to attract great leadership. It's why you set compensation. None of you are doing this for compensation. None of you are going to get rich si sitting in those seats. In fact, mostly you hear you hear more negative than positive. It's a tough decision to agree to serve your community. Um, there's been some information about there that somehow this board goes to less meetings. Um, I'd be happy to let the public know that's just pure nonsense. Don't listen to it. Uh, in fact, it, this board attends and these extra committees and the ability to put that strategic plan together uh, is so inspiring, phenomenal. You guys came together and said, look, we're all going to come together. You might not all agree that these were the, the um, all of these issues that you put forward on a strategic initiative plan were your priorities, but as a board, you came together. You, you formed as a board and you said, as a board, this is our, our body of work and this is where we're going. People don't understand the commitment you make. Um, whether it is answering the phone at 9 o'clock at night or 6 in the morning. I know because I deal with you guys on a regular basis. I know what you go through. Um, the the, the 40,000 residents in this community, all they know is stuff works here. Grand Blanc Township's doing okay, um, you know, un unless their recycling doesn't get picked up. <laughs> and they say, what are you, what are you guys doing? Um, but they, they realize what we're doing. You look at the comparisons, I know there were some comments that they didn't agree with the comparisons that we used. Those comparisons are like communities. They're full service communities. They have police and fire and water and sewer. They do all the things. The complexity that you guys deal with versus Davison Township, and David can attest to this, 
is so far and above what some of these other communities are, you should be compensated for it. Mr. Bennett works his tail off, folks. He's here every single day. If he's not, he's on the phone. He's at meetings. Um, man, Scott, I, I know you don't want to vote yes. I, 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 if I could prevail upon you, I would tell you to just vote yes and, and compensate yourself like you should be compensated. You do an incredible job here. You've been a fantastic leader for this community. <coughs> And just the crap you took last year and you stayed the course and just kept pushing, you're going to keep things going right for Grand Blank Township. That's all that's ever mattered to you. And I have the utmost respect for you. I hope you guys seriously consider uh, moving this resolution forward. It's been studied. 40,000 people, what, 17-some thousand voters? We asked people for seven months, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. Here's what we're thinking. How many did you hear from? A couple naysayers and a... And maybe during, even during Zoom calls, we had like five who said, you guys should just do this, right? This isn't a, the, the folks out here support what you're doing. They, they love to see where you guys have gone as a board. Um, man, I hope you guys can, can see a, a support in this for Mr. Bennett, because I'm very passionate about this. He does an incredible job. I hope he sticks around because it will be excellent for this community. Thanks, Thank Mr. You. Lehman. Thank you. I feel like we should clap <laughs> <laughs> because it's all so true. I, so. I appreciate all the uh, the positive comments, Mr. 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 I have Gilmer. a question. Did, did do we have to vote on this again, or are we? We've not voted on it yet. We haven't voted yet on this. It's a separate resolution okay. from the trustees. Did I? Did we have a motion in support? Yes. Yes. And the motion was from from was it? Forgive um, me, Trustee Raritan. I think supported Raritan. by Fike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I appreciate all the the positive, you know, comments and the accolades. Um, I do pour, pour my heart into it, and uh, um, I want to say that Mr. Lima does a phenomenal job, and our, our clerk and treasurer. You know, one of the things that I, I read too was that you know the the superintendent should be taking over, you know, more of the responsibilities for. <laughs> Um, our positions, but the the bottom line is the reason why we have uh, a highly qualified person in that position isn't to take over um, the roles of our board. It's to generate even more. Um, I call it excitement, but generate even more enthusiasm for our township outside of uh, these four walls uh, to make sure that the services are provided even uh, better than ever, and that that actually keeps the board busier. Um, because we're, you know, what other townships dealing with a, a billion dollar potential development? What other municipality has full time police that is the size of ours that's accredited within this compensation study? You know, which of them have a fire department that they just took on in the last two years? Parks and Rec. I mean, we have municipalities calling us, asking us, can we help? You know, everybody on this list is called at one time or another asking for our assistance on looking into doing what we're doing. But, but I appreciate the accolades, but uh, um, I am going to, to uh, vote no um, for myself on that, but I appreciate the uh, consideration. So with that, uh, Mr. Robertson, unless somebody else has a comment. Tr Trustee White? Yes. <clears throat> Trustee Raritan? Yes. Trustee Fike? Yes. Trustee Hugo? Yes. Myself, no. Treasurer Kilmer? Yes. Supervisor Bennett? No. Motion passes five to two. Okay. We probably won't need to revisit this issue for a little while, right? <laughs> According to your policy, you will, but you may not make any adjustments. <laughs> okay. Well, um, there, it was a difficult uh, topic. Um, we spent a considerable amount of time on, and uh, we'll move on from here, and I'll, I'll let you know my, my thoughts uh, after. Your supervisor, yes. I would like to ask that item J that's before you would be uh, postponed until I have more information uh, from the, uh, the request. It was an attempt by the city to certainly save the McFarland Library some, some money when it comes to financial auditing. I'm just, the component unit thing has some concerns. I discussed it with our auditors, Plant Moran, today. 
I've sent a request to the mayor of the city and asked her to provide me some additional information from their auditors, uh, Raymond Robson. And so uh, I would ask that the board uh, postpone any action on this item until I have more information and it can show back up uh, on a future agenda if the information is satisfactory to our auditors. Yep. So yeah, we'll, we'll table that item until we have more information. Okay. If that's acceptable for everybody. Okay. We have a consensus on tabling that for now? Okay. Postponed. Yes. Uh, so we'll move on to future agenda items. Anything that anybody has that uh, uh, they want to make sure that we cover. Um, I appreciate uh, Mr. Sears been doing some work on my pet uh, project is getting a light at uh, the Walmart entrance on uh, Dort, and uh, just so that's a little bit more visible. Um, anything else that uh, we, I know we've got our strategic plan, and we'll, next uh, month we'll, I mean our next meeting, we will be having a topic with that. Yes, Mr. Kilmer. Um, the, uh, in, in the future, the, uh, In the future, the uh, these little boxes that we've got around the city, like the planet fit or uh, the painted boxes, like you're talking the city about or in the township. You're saying I'm saying the township. Hmm. You mean like the electrical utility boxes? No, traffic? no. I I mean the the. Donation boxes. Oh, donation boxes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. In my view, those are illegal. Okay. Um. <coughs> we can, I, I know this was a topic that was brought up uh, when we had the North uh, Grand Blank Business uh, Committee right. meet. And one of the things that they mentioned was that there's donation boxes that are in certain parking lots mm -hmm. that attract a lot of people just dumping things there, whether it's donations or just junk. That they, um and fortunately, we, we've got fish that's opening here just north of us that I'm sure will take donations. So if anybody has donations, there's an easy place to drop them off. Right. The, the, uh, um, the purpose of, of, of that, the, one of the, the, the reasons we had some, some goodwill <laughs> donation sites, mm -hmm. um, we we don't. I, I I don't see that we need them, and I I don't see that. Uh, um, we need to accommodate them. Yeah, maybe that's something that Mr. Laddie can uh, look into for us and report back to our board in terms of those boxes. It, it was a concern with business owners seeing those things sitting in parking lots and whether or not. They even sought the permission of the business owner where they put them in the parking lot is questionable. So, Mr. Kilmer? The, uh, well, I, I guess that's all I'm going to say. Okay. Yeah, there. I, I don't believe that they have the permission at some locations, put it that way, to, to have those there. But uh, the other thing is, um, do we actually need them or can we regulate them? I understand. Okay. Any other future agenda items that we want to make sure we tackle? We're going to have uh, more of the budget that we need to talk about, but um, we'll continue to meet on the strategic plan. Okay, with that, uh, we'll move on to Planning Commission. Ms. Hugo, anything to report at? No, not at this time. Our next meeting is actually Thursday this week. Okay. So. Good. Uh, Mr. White, anything with Zoning Board of Appeals? Uh, we had a meeting last week, and... Slightly moved the sign of the new Kroger gas station. So. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Fike, anything with Metro Alliance? Nothing to report. Okay. Uh, Mr. Reardon? The police are trying to recruit some people. Other mm -hmm. than that. Okay. And you serve on the building committee also? On the building, right. And uh, for the fire department. How is that coming along? Anything to report? <clears throat> I think the progress is heading in the right direction. The Chief has been very helpful. He supplied uh, several documents that helped clarify what the building will look like, what's going to be in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I 
think it's moving along positively. Yeah. <coughs> very good, and that committee is very active. Uh, anything, Mr. Comer, with regard to the Treasurer's Office? Okay. Eric Robertson? Uh, nothing to report, sir. You have an election coming up uh, here in the November 2nd. We have one precinct that is part of the Goodrich uh, Community School District, uh, and there is a millage renewal on the ballot in that one precinct. So we have a board meeting on that evening, um, but I believe we clarified that we'll be able to have a uh, county board in one of the conference rooms here, so it shouldn't be. Yeah, I think, we're, I think we're, you've accommodated us just fine. I don't think we need to change the calendar in any way. Um, just a couple of uh, quick things that uh, I'll mention in my report that uh, uh, be careful what emails that uh, you receive in the public from um, any of these board members or f former board members. Uh, there's somebody that's using our names to uh, spoof others and uh, also they're called phishing, uh, P-H-I-S, uh, phishing uh, emails trying to get people to give uh, everything from gift cards to, you know, uh, personal information. Um, I know I personally filed a police report uh, with regard to uh, text messages I've received from people trying to lure me in. Um, but when you receive an email, and this is mainly for the public, but other board members, make sure you look at the email address that it's coming from, even though it may say Scott Bennett or Dave Robertson. I mean, you need to look at the URL, the address after that, because chances are it doesn't it does not say, um, you know, TWP dot grand hyphen blank. It's some other weird address, but be careful of that. Um, also, I, I had somebody in the public suggest that there was possibly a conflict of interest with uh, my serving as uh, treasurer for the um, Karagandi Water Authority. Um, Maybe Mr. Laddie can speak to that, but the Kirignandi Water Authority, just for the public and maybe even some of the board members, um, does not treat our water. It, it basically is a pipeline that brings water over from Port Huron to about six different counties. Um, each county treats their own water, but it, it was built to stabilize our water rates and also provide a source for water other than Detroit. Um, but I know uh, there was some concern over me having a conflict. Mr. Laddie, do you no, see anything? It's a regional authority. There's no, there's no conflict with, with local elected officials serving on that, on that authority. I, I disagree with whoever made that assertion. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of topics that I know that uh, we'll need to research with our Mr. Sears, Mr. Limitas, that we're being asked to uh, um, by uh, Grand Blank Grid to look at paving the shoulders on some of the roads when we when they have a road project. So Grand Blank Road, I think, is slated for 2023. And depending on if, if the federal government picks up the cost, I don't know, it could range anywhere from 5000 to 24000 um, I let them know that, you know, our, our efforts for funding are going towards uh, non-motorized pathways, and it would be a great fundraising, you know, uh, it would be an item for fundraising, whether it's five or $24,000. But... Um, you know, we, we are putting a considerable investment towards the pathways. I put some uh, photos on a social media site of the progress they're making on the Dort Highway pathways. Um, it's exciting to see that whole project come together. Uh, the DDA is working on a project for Baldwin Road and widening it, and their engineering pathways. It would be great if we could do Baldwin with a pathway, go all the way down Embury. Um, uh, so, you know, that's where our... Uh, Funding is headed, but um, the roundabout at uh, Embury and uh, Grand Blank Road, which I'm receiving a lot of questions on, uh, was delayed because Consumers Energy uh, had a high pressure gas line that uh, the Road Commission's been waiting for them to replace. I guess uh, consumers let them know about two weeks before the project uh, began that they were going to need to replace that and not to get anywhere near it. That it was like at least fifty years old. Do um, we have a? Do, forgive me, Mr. Yep. And do we have a an update or a status report on what Consumers Energy is doing with well, it? Well, Consumers is in the process now um, replacing it. You'll see the pipe out there um, and the construction crews uh, replacing it. How long it'll take them, I I don't know. But uh, Consumers is having to pay for every day that the roundabout uh, construction is held up. 
There was also a utility pole that needed to be moved that they were waiting, con the road construction crews were waiting to have moved. So sure. apparently consumers has to pay a fine for every day that that construction doesn't move forward. Should this not have been corrected? Was there a lack of communication early on? Or was there, what, what's the story? Is, is there a back story there? Just that uh, they notified the road commission two weeks before the project began, I believe, that uh, at least that's what I've heard, that uh, that the high pressure gas line was going to need to be replaced. So they've been waiting for it to be replaced. And now that the project, they would be done with the project if it weren't for that gas line being replaced, is what I'm hearing from the road <clears throat> uh, Ms. Hugo, or your name? Did I also hear that they found a fire hydrant buried? Did I hear that correctly in that area? OK. That's very interesting. Well, I hope that I hope that consumers <laughs> are moving with all deliberate speed to complete their work so we can get that open. Right. And, you know, we've also been asked, I know uh, Police Chief Wiles has been uh, probably getting phone calls with regard to Reed Road um, and wanting us to put a stop sign there or light. Um, Michigan Department of Transportation has said absolutely not that um, when you put a <coughs> A light up on a highway like that, uh, you have to give forewarning months in advance that it's coming. And I, I believe, you know, my own unexpert uh, opinion is you put a stoplight there and you're going to give false sense of hope to people stopping uh, on Reed that they're going to think that they can go through. And I don't know, but uh, all I can say is I, I hope that residents will take an alternative route to, uh, to taking Reed Road if they have problems with because I, I have seen lots of uh, near misses, including my own, and uh, also seen a number of accidents. But uh, I'm not sure that there's any solution other than taking a different route. But, uh, you know, we, we've complained that there's a number of road uh, issues we wanted fixed, and they're getting to them, but it, you know, it takes time to get those done. Um, we are dealing with a small uh, flooding issue that uh, the media um, came out and interviewed a uh, number of residents, and, and we are working with the Road Commission on um, getting that taken care of on Gibson Road. Uh, the problem is that uh, the Road Commission would like to put a uh, drain in across an individual's property, go to a creek, but they're having a tough time getting an easement from the resident that uh, they would like to get it from. Um, so we'll see what, what we can do to accommodate that. But it is a, a problem that's existed for probably decades. Um, my assumption was when they paved the road earlier this year or late last year that it was taken care of. But obviously with these 50-year rains we've had, um, we found out that it isn't taken care of. So with that, um, Mr. Laddie, anything to report? No, sir. Okay. Mr. Lemina? Now, uh, the only thing I will tell you is that in two weeks we will have the DPW budget um, on your agenda for you to walk us through there. Uh, again, um, it's complicated. We're, uh, there's a lot going on in DPW, and uh, we'll take all the time we need to get through there. Please let me know if you have individual questions about anything in the budget or if it's individual department. I can have one department come back. I mean, I, I know you saw the graph up there, and... Uh, the public services or, or or law enforcement and fire services take a big portion of your discretionary funds, um, but there's a reason for that, and it you know it's that's probably one of the most complicated budgets that you have uh, in front of you, or the most complicated cost centers just with the police department. Ron would be happy to come back, or Chief Wiles, to answer any specific questions that you may have. You just need to let us know who you need here and when you need and what meeting you need him here for. We'll set aside time until you guys let me know you're comfortable and prepared to move forward with the public hearing, truth and taxation, and adoption. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Appreciate your time. It's uh, about uh, 9 39, Mr. Supervisor. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by. Reardon. Dr. Reardon, support by Ms. Hugo. Okay, Hugo. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Adjourned at 939. Thank you, everyone.